Broadcast is live. We're live. Madames et messieurs, je vous souhaite les bienvenus au Carnival. I'm your host, Rene Dupree, with a very, very, very special guest. The brother of the late, great Chris Candido. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Johnny Candido. Bonjour, monsieur. How are you? I'm doing very good. I'm doing very well. Very well. So you're down <laughs> there in... Uh, I, am I allowed to say what state you live in? Or yeah, yeah, go ahead. So you're in the beautiful state of New Jersey. Yeah, at, at, at the at the Jersey Shore. That's that's where at I the live. Jersey you Shore. Know? Yeah. So yeah. um, so uh, last night, uh, Tuesday night, the premiere episode of this season's Dark Side of the Ring aired, which featured your brother and his uh, then misses, the very controversial Tammy Sonny Sitch. Uh, I thought it came across very well. You came across very well in the documentary. Um, Thank you. Your, your, your thoughts. What was, uh, what's your opinion of it now that you've seen it aired? So the first time I watched it, I was like, I was on pins and needles. I was waiting for, because mm. I didn't get to, like, you know, they, they interviewed me over two days. Long story short, I liked it. It came across really really good and right. it was it was more my brother's story and and tammy was in it right as opposed to the two of them because you know my brother since since he was as you know i said in the dark side of the ring i call him cook when i was a kid i couldn't say chris right so i called him cook and throughout our entire lives i i called him chris once in ecw arena i was <laughs> like hey cook cook he couldn't hear me i'm like chris he runs over he's like Dude, don't ever call me that again. It sounds weird. I'm like, yeah, it felt weird. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, my, my brother Cook. That's why I always say my brother because I never say Chris. He, right. uh, it was his story. He was so passionate about wrestling. He started, he he started working when he was 13. He, you know, he. Oh shit. Yeah, he, he, he actually went to a, a council meeting in our town. Yeah. Because at the time he was training at the Monster Factory. Right, right. And uh, and he was sneaking off to, like, indie shows whenever he could to, like, set up the ring and take bumps. And, like, that's all he gave a shit about was, right. was wrestling. Right. So when he was 13, he uh, he was at the Monster Factory, and he was able to use the ring. So he went to a town council meeting, like, all dressed up in, like, a suit and tie, went in there and, like, proposed why he should have wrestling, you know, at, at the park in Spring Lake. Yeah. And, uh and he, he knew Bam Bam from the Monster Factory. Bam was like 20, 21. Um, and then John, who was Balls Mahoney, yes. you know, him and my brother were the same age. And they had like, uh, you know, a bunch of the younger guys wrestling. And they did that, you know, during the summers when they were like 13, 14, 15. And, you know, it was, it was super cool. And that's, you know, he was just so passionate about the business. He loved it so much. You know, I don't think I've ever loved anything as much as my brother loved professional wrestling, you know. Like yeah. he, he just loved it, right? Um, so, so oh yeah, I, I thought it came across great. You know, I'm that that's uh, I sometimes I keep fucking talking, but yeah, no, I thought it came across great. I'm very happy with the with the documentary. So, um, there was a lot of stories that obviously you could have told, but maybe for, I mean, some of the stuff you told me off camera, dude, is just <laughs> sanity. I mean. That that woman, uh, is it safe to say that she ruined his life in many ways? Yeah, yeah, and right. and like fucking it ended it in a lot of ways. Right. It, you know, I'm not going to get into like conspiracy theories and shit like that, mm -hmm. but I, I I don't fucking I can't understand if you're in a, an abusive relationship like that. Right. Like, why would you? Why would you stay? Like, that's like, the only physical co confrontation me and him ever gotten to was over her, because she'd be smacking him, hitting him. He'd be no selling it. He would never, you know, ever hit him back. Like, you know, as kids, you know, of course we were taught like never hit a woman. So of course right. he never would, obviously. Right. And uh, so uh, there was one time I guess maybe I was twenty two. He was and so. Once my brother and I, once I started working, Tammy was kind of out of the business. It was just the two of us. Right. And she would get pissed off. Like, the two of us would, like, go off on the road. And, and before, I would be like, oh, you don't want to come. It's the shits. 
Um, the car's going to be full. Balls is coming. Bammer's coming. You don't want to come. It's going to suck. Right. So she would stay behind, but sometimes she'd come. And anytime she'd come, she'd freaking raise hell. So one night after like a big, um, you know, a, a big fight, smacking them, punching them, kicking them. She was laying on the bed. He went over to, to talk to her and she fucking kicked him right in the face. Dude, I couldn't watch it anymore. I grabbed him. I threw him out into the, into the, uh, the, out of the hotel room, shut the door behind us. We wrestled, got to a stalemate. I'm like, dude, let's just leave. Leave her here now. Like, what the fuck? Like, so, you know, me and her had a very contentious relationship. And he, and he would always be like, dude, I can't. I brought her into my, he's all his, like his business. He's like, I brought her into my business. I have to see it through. Right. So, you know, I. So, do, you, do you think if saying your brother would have kept her out of the business that the that he would have had a lot more not saying like he wasn't successful because he was i mean he had great runs wherever he went but i mean he would have a maybe prolonged his career longer if if he you know if he would have kept the, the wife at yes home. of course yeah. Right? yeah yeah and she and she and she wasn't his wife they you know they were together i guess you know but then they were never like married married they would just say my wife it wasn't okay. like but i think he would have been you know one of the biggest stars in wrestling had he had he not met her and, and kept her around like i like i never got that just like blind allegiance you know because especially when the cheating rumors were going on right and i'd bring it to him i'd say look dude like people are saying x y and z and he'd say like he'd be like dude she's She's a girl in a locker room with 300. It's one girl and 200 guys. You think there's not going to be any rumors? And of course, he's my brother. I believe them. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Of course, there's going to be rumors. So right. I thought it was all bullshit. Right. And then when, uh, you know, after he passed away, a couple of years after that, I don't know, whatever, 07, 08, she came out on the shoot interview laughing, talking about she banged this guy, she banged that one, you know. Just fuck, man, that's. And trash. it made me insane because I used to watch I used to watch my brother go crazy over this stuff. You know what right. I mean? And for right. her to just laugh about it. Ha ha. And know the shit that she put my brother through. Like, but you know. Like, like I heard Dr. Tom uh, saying, and I heard obviously heard this story like uh, on shoe interviews and, and stuff before, but like while he's in the ring wrestling, she's fucking around with one of the boys. Like, oh my God, dude. And you know, <laughs> it's one of my one of my favorite parts just to add some fucking comedy to this one of my favorite parts of the dark side of the ring like i said i watched it once because i was just to see it because i was nervous then i watched it again and and jim Cornette, he, i freaking love jim Cornette. he's hilarious and he's like he's like he's like hadn't he's like if they were in different circumstances and sean got cross with chris chris would pound him into 15 pieces and shove him up his own ass <laughs> <laughs> I was I was thinking about it today. I'm like he's gonna pound him into fifteen pieces and shove him up his own ass. Like he's gonna shove it up whose ass? He's gonna he's not gonna shove it in, in his own ass. That'll get in the way of the wrestling. You can't. Right. But is he gonna take the fourteen pieces and shove it up the part the asshole is in? I, I was just like, uh, you know, I was joking to my buddies about that earlier. So, but, uh, like your brother's click, I mean, would have been. I guess while when he was in the WWF would have been probably Shane Douglas and Dr. Tong because they were tag partners or whatever. And then obviously Sonny. Well, it was more like he was pretty much friends with everyone. And especially right. like in the beginning, before all the cheating shit happened, like, you know, he'd come back and he'd be like, Oh dude, you know, the, the Hardy boys made me this bandana. Oh dude. Yeah. I'm, and he knew, he knew Shawn Michaels from before, like he'd been doing jobs and stuff. And yeah. been hanging around before he, you know, before he got signed. So yeah. he pretty much knew everyone. Uh, you know, Al Snow, we hung out with, and they and they drove together. But, you know, I, I, as far as like his allies back there, I know when when Bammer got there, the two of them were, you know, knew each other since they were kids. Right. But it, you know, it it makes me feel bad. I wish I was older so I could have been there with him to, mm. you know, because the guys would like break his balls and. You know, and he he got so frustrated that he fucking wanted to leave after a couple of years. You know, and then what what they wanted to do was 
the 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 skip thing had had run its course and it was freaking dumb my brother would just rather be himself right than, you know than than be that no and gimmicks he, needed yeah exactly right. and yeah. he was training the rock and having the rocks first couple matches with him and helping to train mark henry yeah. and uh then you know he was like on the back burner but like training the other guys yeah. like you know the, the guys who were coming in yeah. and he was like you know i i have a small window in this business to to be a star and to actually make money and I don't want to make other people stars. I kind of want to make myself a star. And that's when he kind of jumped ship to go to ECW. Right. And, uh, you know, he, uh, I remember him telling me, it, it, it was like, I think Vince said something like, you can't just leave. I need it in writing. And he like took a piece of notebook paper. and was like, I quit. And he signed his name and like handed it over. <laughs> and left. You know, <laughs> it was something like that. <laughs> Very simple. I quit. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, now you guys were tight with Balls Mahoney. Now, Balls Mahoney was my riding partner when I was on the fake ECW. No way. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We rode together. I know it's kind of like you got the clean, like arrogant French guy, and you got balls. You got balls. Like, right. But no, I got on great. Always oh, had dude. good matches. And uh, I always enjoyed his company, right? Very entertaining guy. So uh, how close were your, you and your brother with Balls uh, growing up? You guys grew up together, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, he uh, he lived the town over. Um, and uh, the, the two of them knew each other because how they first met was my brother was on, uh, uh, you know, on, on a Little League team when he was, like, again, like 12, 13. And, and Balls was, like, watching the game in, like, a Roddy Piper shirt. My brother's like, hey, you like pro wrestling? And he's like, yeah. And my brother's like, yeah, um, you know, my, my grandfather is a wrestler. And uh, I'm going to go to convention hall tomorrow, help set up the ring, and then take bumps in the ring. And Balls, you know, John was like, you know, he thought it was bullshit. I thought my brother was bullshitting him. My brother's like, you can come if you want. But that's so a shoot, though? Your grandfather was a wrestler? Yeah, so it's not – so my brother, it's kind of – for all intents and purposes, yes. Okay. <laughs> and so okay. not to go through the whole... So my grandfather was a wrestler. Okay. And uh, so Balls thought my brother was full of shit. But then the next day, the two of them went to convention hall, set the ring up, took bumps. And, you know, they were friends ever since. And then they started their own little federation when they were, you know, 13, 14. And uh, so they, they knew each other, you know, like that. And, uh, and he was always... Balls... You know him. He's a freaking huge personality. He's, you know, he's just, he, he he's one of a kind. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. you know, me and my brother would do, we, we, we would fuck with him a lot. Like, you know, like me and him would be sitting at his house and like, you know, me and my brother would be chilling. Like, yo, I wonder what Balls does. What, what do you think he does when he's just like hanging by himself? I'm like, right, let's go find out. <laughs> and go to his house, like walk up covertly, like look into his windows I remember the first time we did, Balls was sitting there watching TV. He had one slice of bologna and a fork and a knife. And he was going to cut it. Me and my brother are looking in the windows, like fucking dying of laughter. He goes to cut the bologna. And my brother goes on his window, like light taps. Right. And John stops, goes back to cutting the bologna, mm. knocks again. And then we went boom, 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 knocking the door. He jumped up. And we used to do that shit all the time. We used to go fuck with him, and but uh, yeah, he's he's such a he was such a character, man. I I and something, and he was my favorite opponent too. I loved I I loved working with John. Dude, when it came to working in the ring, I saw I was working with balls, man. It was like oh, night off, dude. Yeah, for real. And you know, me and him went back and forth with the with the hardcore title in in New Jersey, mm. and uh, yeah, we had we had some of the greatest matches. But yeah. Out of the ring, he was even more of a character than he was in the ring. You he know? was a wild child, that's for sure. Uh, there's, always, there's a question that I always want to know, like, you know how his teeth got all rotted out, right? Now, there's been, yeah. like, rumors that it might be, like, substance abuse or whatever, but he always said it was because when he would blow the, blow fire, the fire, it was, like, whatever um, whatever substance he would use, I don't know what it was. But turpentine. Oh, so is that what really did it? It wasn't, like, crystal meth or whatever? He 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 didn't do crystal meth. 
so he had fucked up right. teeth, <laughs> like you know, just like teeth. He, he wouldn't kayfabe all of us, you know, like right. we'd be we we would know. Mm-hmm. Um, he just fucking. I think some people just have shitty teeth and some people don't. I don't know. Right. His teeth were never the greatest. Maybe he didn't brush them a whole lot. I, you know, it, it wasn't that, because of any like crystal meth or anything weird like that. You right. know, he just uh, he just like I have bad teeth, John. I have bad teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, which which make me oh, sorry go ahead, go ahead so what was his whole thing about like your brother and sonny for example like i mean everybody pretty much knew what was going on did he ever try to confront her about what she was doing to him or no because she's such a bitch she wouldn't even she'd be like i'm not listening to him fuck him you know what i'm saying like it, it's it's kind of hard to explain the dynamic yeah, between all of us, you know what I mean. Like he, if he did try to say something to him, we would just fucking blow him off, and not really take it, you know, not take it seriously. And what's what's kind of crazy is too, like, so when my brother moved back to town, like right after, right after WCW. So yeah. you know, we, like we grew up in this small town where everyone knows everyone, you know what I mean, right. and and nobody gave a shit that he was a wrestler. They just knew him as Cook, you know, my, my older brother who yep. did wrestling. You know what I mean? So when he came back to town, I was like, yeah, you know, Cook's back in town. Let's hang at his house. You know, I remember me and all my buddies were back there. We had boats, kayaks, all kind of shit. You know, I say that to say when uh, my, my friends knew how Tammy got when she drank. And my brother had a had like a, a house meeting with all, with all of us. And he's like... Um, He's like, guys, you know, he's like, I don't care that you guys come, hang out here, drink, whatever. He's just like, no hard alcohol allowed in my house because if she gets a hold of it, you know. So anyway, I say that to say one of my friends was having a birthday party and he's like, dude, I really want your brother to show up, but I'm scared to death to invite Tammy. So, Mm -hmm. you know, so he's like, I'm going to just tell him straight up, like, I really want you to come. I hang out at your house like all day, so I'm not going to not invite you to my party. But right. I don't want Tammy to come. So, you know, I, I, I'm i like, hey, Cook, let's go for a walk. And my friend told him that. He's like, all right. He's like, I'll stop by for a drink and then I'll go back. And then so we're in there. If you, you know, my brother He's very affable, talks to everyone. So we're, we're at the bar at my friend's birthday party having a couple of drinks. And the door fucking swings open and it's her. She <laughs> caught us there. And she's like, she's like, oh, yeah, open bar to a Long Island iced teas with no ice. Sucks them both down, starts a huge melee at the bar. Fucking so, you know. So correct me if I'm wrong, but was she an only child? No, she had a sister named Denise. Okay. No, I know that, but she had uh, she she always had like heat with her family. Was her father a police officer? I'm not sure what he did. I know he passed away um like soon. Like, 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 right when my brother and her started dating, like, like oh. when they were teenagers. Oh, okay. So it was that kind of deal. Right. But it's like, I, I you know, I spent a lot of time on the road and you know how it is when you're on the road, you know, you're, uh, empty, uh, so I've watched a lot of shoot interviews, right? Mm-hmm. Like almost like just incredible, told a story one time how they were at Chris's house and while Chris was in the shower, she proposition him in their bedroom it was like, yeah God. And, 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 and you know what's crazy i heard these stories and i didn't believe it right and then because i i never saw her like that obviously and i never saw her act like that but mm. then we were out in california i was out there with my brother and her for the xpw and we were we were getting a ride back and this fella justice Payne was in the car with us okay and we were waiting for my brother to come out and she was like full on, like, like, like flirting with him, like in front of me. And he was staring at me because he felt awkward as shit. Right. And I'm like looking at her like, what the fuck? And, and he's looking back at me. And then my brother came in the car and she like snapped out of it. It was, almost, it, it was, it was weird. Like I saw that once, but I was like, wow. Like now, you know, I kind of get it. Cause people right. are like, how could Chris not have known? She was like so flirty. I'm like, I never saw that part of her. Like, you know, but you know how like some couples are like swingers and maybe they're into that. Yeah, dude, my no. brother was not into that kind of shit. Like, okay, okay, like so, 
like when when like when when the finances were the best, they bought this like mansion, all this shit, everything was going great. Mm. That's when the 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 the, the craziness was at its worst you know like I, I would sleep over there yeah and then in the middle of the, we, you know she'd be gimmicked up sleeping whatever me and him watch a movie hang out and then i'd go to sleep and then in the middle of the night i'd hear johnny chris is trying to kill himself so i run down the stairs he'd be passed out on the couch and she'd be raining fists down on his face and uh you know i, I would i'd block her he'd wake up she'd freak it like it was just uh, it was a it was a clusterfuck and he he was he, he I, I think he knew but didn't want to know like like th- that was that was one of the main things that you know that he denied it denied that, that that made them fight all the time i assume because you know so I, how I old he was i how old, he was not into it how old were you when they like when they first started dating like what's the age gap between you and your brother chris how many years 10 okay so basically when they started dating they were like what 16 17 i'm assuming 17 yeah okay so you'd have been like seven years old yeah so but so what I, age, just, just what before, age before, you, before that, that real quick he yeah. ha- he's had other girlfriends okay and and like when, when i was younger and i know this because I, I, I have a funny story about one of them okay. but uh so i know he's had other girlfriends so it's not like oh the first girl he met you know what I'm saying? Like he had like little girlfriends through, you know, through through uh, high school and everything. Right. You know, so. But Tammy was, was like the first love that. Right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Pretty much. Yep. So, do you think she got crazier once she got into the wrestling business and started getting the fame and the attention? You think? Yeah. That well, absolutely that. But yeah. I remember there was a there was a point where. The two of them were out of high school. Okay. Tammy was going to go to Miami to to do like something in the medical industry. Uh, she, she wanted she wanted to be a doctor, a plastic surgeon, or something like that. Right. I heard a story of that that she did. Yeah. Yeah, and she wanted to do that. And I remember my mom telling my brother, like, "Listen, Christopher, like, if that's what she wants to do, you have to let her do that, and you guys would have to break up." And he's like, "I understand." And I remember him, like, you know, being sad about it, me talking to him later, and he's like, me and Tammy might break up, you know. And, uh, but when it was time for him to go to Tennessee, she went with him. Right. And that's how the whole wrestling thing started. Like, had she gone to Miami and he just gone to Tennessee? I mean, he was going to wrestle no matter what. You know what I mean? Right. Like, he wasn't changing his plans. So she was either going to go with him or she was going to go to to to, 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 to Florida and, and be a doctor. So... You know, or well, like your like brother that. was a good looking guy, fit, and he was a hell of a wrestler. So, uh, getting women wouldn't have been a problem for him, right? No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> and, it, and, you know, years later, I mean, I'll, I'll say this when, you know, like around the time when, like, like right before in, in, in 04, 03, 04, he was like, uh, you know, he's like, dude, listen, he's like, you're going to come across Shawn Michaels. Don't be a dick. Don't fucking start anything thinking you're doing me a favor. Right. He's like, fucking be cool. You know, for all you know, it's rumors. And if anything did happen, I haven't I haven't been perfect either. So it's water under the bridge. Don't start anything. Right. I'm like, all right, right on. Like, so, I, you know, I I think that he, he, he may have thought something happened or it might have been rumors. But, you know, either way, you know. He loved according, her. According to her, the whole relationship with Sean only started once her and Chris were on like a, a break or whatever. Yeah, that's that's bullshit. That's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. There, there was never a break. Okay. You know. Yeah. And even when they were even when they were apart, um, yeah, they would call each other every two seconds. Like I, I've had conversations with you know like family members. Like when did she have time to cheat? Because they were together all the fucking time. Right, and if they weren't together all the time, like I remember, so my, my brother's first night of ECW, mm-hmm. I was at my aunt Kathy's house. It was like uh, it was somebody's birthday party. My mom's like, "Oh, Johnny cooks here in a limousine." Um, 
he, he wants you to come out and talk to him. So I go out there. I'm like, yo, Cook, what's going on? He's in his gear. He's like, uh, he's like, dude, I'm, I'm going to a, uh, you know, I'm going to a new federation tonight. You, you want to take a ride with me to Philadelphia? I'm like, yeah, sure. Right on. Let's go. <laughs> and uh, so I, I remember going with him to the first night of ECW, um, watching him work Spike Dudley, um, you know, doing all that. And that on top that night was, was uh, Brian Lee and Tommy Dreamer and that scaffold match. I'd never seen anything like that. My mind was blown. Right. But then after that, you know, that night we had such a great time. And then she was still in WWE, the WWF, whatever. Okay. And uh, he would bring me with him to all the different ECW shows and they'd be in the car and they'd be on the phone. And he'd be like, all right, babe. Okay. Yep. Love you. Talk to you later. Click. We'd be talking five minutes later. Hello. Hey, so what's going on? I'm like, who's that? It's like Tammy. I'm like, Tammy again. Like, even when they weren't together, they were talking to each other every two seconds. So, yeah, that, that whole thing that they were on a break is fucking bullshit. Fucking bullshit. So, yeah. Geez. Okay. One so time, got... this, is, this is the closest okay. thing they got to a, to a break. Okay. One time they got in a fight and he left and spent the night at a motel. One night. That was so, it. Yeah. That that was was it. Time. Uh huh. <laughs> Power, I call it the V power, power of the vagina, dude. Gang Green, thank you. Just watched the episode. Bless you and your family. Thank you. Oh, Gang thanks, Green. Gang Green. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, Rex Gardner, one of our best uh, listeners. Thanks for coming on the show to share your story. We appreciate it. Well, I appreciate it. Hey, no problem, it. man. Too. So let's get to some. Is, like, I know you've done like podcasts and stuff, and you told, is there any like never been told stories that you can give us like on just how yeah toxic the relationship was so you know so uh, i'm trying to think about the some some that i've never told before about how toxic it was I, but so like there'd be little things that like like every day was like fucking toxic for instance so we'd all go to the gym like me like uh, we kind of like me and all my buddies and not all my buddies but like let's say me and my friends and chris would go to the gym and tammy would just kind of like hang out yeah. while we were at the gym and you know we'd lift we'd fuck around like going to the gym for us we'd, we'd be there for like three four hours so anyway this one time one of my buddies has one of those those like yoga bars and he's stretching with it a little bit yeah. and it, it goes it goes near her and she fucking it pretends it hits her in the eye falls on the ground selling the eye going oh my god my eye call the ambulance i have to go to the hospital and so we all just saw what happened you know and now her hands pasted to her eye i have to go to the hospital i have to go to the hospital my brother's on the ground going can i see it no i have to go to the hospital so we're, we we speed it up and the whole ride she's like this uh, you know, my eye, my eye, he's talking about her eye. So we're in the waiting room. She, my brother's like, can I look at the eye? She's like, no. So we get to the hospital. So let's say we got to the hospital at 11 at night. Okay. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're waiting. Midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Me, all my friends, all sitting there like, what the fuck? Then she walks out, not selling the eye anymore. She goes, Ultram. All I got was Ultram. Fuck this. Rips it up, throws it in the garbage. Let's go. So she did that whole thing just to get pain pills. Yep. And all they gave her was Ultram. No more selling the eye. No more nothing. And then on the way home, and this is another thing. I Back then, I, I smoked pot. I, I don't really anymore, but I would. And it'd be my car, and she'd be in the car. If I'd light anything up, ugh, ugh, selling. Oh, put that out. Jesus Christ. Ugh, ugh, oh, asthma you're giving me. Anytime she was in my car, I was gonna <laughs> fucking kill her. I like, know so many people like that, man. Like they'll they'll do blow, they'll drink like fish, but when it comes to right? like marijuana, it's like, oh my god, put fucking covering up, put it out, right. like, dude. It's it's fuck. Is it legalized in um or decriminalized in Jersey yet? Or I I, I think so. I, I have a I have a class A CDL commercial driver's license. Okay, so. I know there's a possibility I could get drug tested somewhere, so I I don't even do I don't even fucking smoke, you know. Right, right. But uh, I I think it is, you know. All, all my friends fucking smoke and stuff. I just don't, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think it's decriminalized. 
you want to hear a funny story about my brother the first, he he never he never i got him to smoke once i used to smoke a lot right like you know all like all the time constantly mm. and uh so one day me and him are driving to the gym we stop at Sam to get a red bull or whatever and i look at the car you know i i look at the car next to me and i see a bag under the car and i reach into the bag and i could feel like buds in the bag so i took it threw it in the back of my car and uh <laughs> i fucking I, I i go in the store i'm like cook come on like like i, I gotta show you something let's let's, let's let's hurry this up so he gets in the car i reach back and i pull out of this bag two individually bagged ounces of like really good what? weed right wow. yeah and i'm like dude we're getting blazed tonight he's like dude, i've never <laughs> smoked anything in my life i'm like all right i'll teach you let's go up to our fucking old room so we go into our parents house Go into our, so, in our parents' house, the fourth floor was just Chris's and then just mine. It's like a bedroom and then like an office. Yeah. So I had this giant bong. And I'm, I I freaking took a bong hit, and he's like, "How do I work this?" I'm like, "Don't worry, I'll light it for you, and then you just shit twenty percent battery. What the fuck?" So anyway, I I I fill up the bong. I'm like, "Here, clear it." <gasps> he takes one giant bong hit, and since he had such good lung capacity. Smoke was coming out of me, looked like a dragon. All of a sudden, he was just insta blazed. <laughs> and he's like, uh, he's like, you, like you, you, I could tell he was super high because he couldn't tell like how high his voice was. He's like, right. you want you want to go to the beach? I'm like, yeah, let's go to the beach. So we walk over to the beach. Then he's like, hungry. I'm like, all right, let's go back to mom and dad's. So we went, and I I meant so he he didn't talk. He just stood there, completely blazed. And then I made Eggo waffles with peanut butter and jelly. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, how much peanut butter do you want? He just goes, moderate. I said, all right. And that, that's, dude, it was, it was hilarious to see him stoned because he never, he's like, my, he's like, I never smoked anything, you know, like yeah. cigarettes, you know. So it was funny. Just imagine like how many of the boys would still be alive if there was like a, at one point in time, like in the WWE or whatever, like the, I think it's while your brother was there. If you had a prescription, you could take all the pills you wanted, but it was like absolutely it's, no marijuana, right? Yeah, it's insane. And exactly yeah. like, like like we had, we knew pharmacies that were compromised, and we like could shady, go, shady fucking yeah, like you know, uh, soprano type shit. Right, and and we could just go and get 120 somas, 120 norcos every other day if we wanted to, wow. you know, <clears throat> and it, so it was just a fucking free for all, and it would be so much better if they could just do that because until WWE, when when I, you know when when Chris was was you know 23 24 he he never touched a, a drink a pill a nothing he was completely clean. He was actually in this book, Who's Who of American High School Students. So you got straight A's every single year of high school, standout amateur wrestler, just like the, you know, the the fucking the on um, the powerlifting team. Like a blue chip athlete. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, he was he was so perfect. And then I guess because he saw it as a prescription and the other guys are doing it. Yeah. And he also had it, he also broke his neck. So he didn't do it just because he broke his neck. How did he break his neck? In I think it it slowly broke the night. Um, so him and Al Snow were, were 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 working with each other over and over again, and the finish every night was. Uh, I want to say it was like a, uh, like a like a German suplex with a bridge, or I for, I forget what it was. It was something that was pretty like a dragon suplex, or I forget what it was. But he took it over and over and over and over and over, okay. and then one day his neck was hurt, and they looked, and it was broken. And uh, and then also, he he and he was he would always take crazy bumps. Like he just uh, he he liked it. He felt like it added to the match. He just wanted to keep going. Yeah. And like uh, so yeah. So he he broke his neck once in in WWE, and he broke his neck again in ECW. So that's when he got prescribed almost for the first time. Fuck. And then and then and then in those days, you could order them through the mail. You can get them here. You can get them there. So, mm, mm, you know, mm. it was just so easy to have fucking somas everywhere. Yeah, I remember, man, like, uh, this is like, 
maybe six months after I left, there was this huge online bust of like all the boys. There was like 20 of the boys that got caught like uh, steroids and like uh, prescription painkillers all through the mail to this like signature pharmacy, I think it was called or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. And I was going to say, yeah, they, 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 you could get anything on online. And then, like I said, we had this connect that we could get whatever from pharmacies too. Right. You know? So, so easy. Um, hold on. Here's a question for you. Let me. Usually I have my co host that does this for me. So, but today I'm doing it solo. <laughs> so let's talk some more about balls, man. Like, oh, dude. All right. So, the biggest thieves, that, right? I, I know I told you, like, I, I, I hinted at two different stories the him and New Jack beef, which only right. could happen in, in wrestling. Right. And then the time he tried to cut my head off with a sword. <laughs> Which okay. one do you want to hear first? I don't first? know where you should start, but the sword, the sword cutting head. Over. All right, so, all right. So the sword cutting. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so me and John always would loan each other shit, like you know, Vikes, Somas, whatever. Yeah. And uh, so I went over there in the morning, and I'm like, uh, I'm like, yo, dude, like, can I get a couple of gimmicks? He's like, yeah, no problem. So I had a whole bottle of Norcos. So he fucking whatever gave me like a handful, ten, whatever. Right. Then around noon, a friend of mine comes over. He's like, he's like, yo, dude, you got you got any bikes? I'm like, I don't, but but balls does. Let's take a ride over there. So we rode our bikes to his house. I'm like, yo, John, let me get it. Let me get a couple gimmicks. He's like, I don't have any. I'm like, yeah, you do. I just fucking was here two hours ago. I saw an entire bottle. Let me get like four. He's like, I don't have any. I'm like, all right. I'm like, let me have a cigarette then. He's like, all right, they're in my bedroom. I'm like, okay. So I go into his bedroom and then sitting on his nightstand. This is a bottle of Norcos. So I'm like, <laughs> I, I pop the bottle. I start dumping him in my hand. I hear him. He's running. He goes, he catches me red handed. He goes, we stole that medication. I threw it in my mouth. And now we're fighting. My friend is like 130 pounds. Pew, he runs away. So me and Balls are <laughs> fighting. I'm chewing these gimmicks up. We're fighting, fighting. His house is small. So we're not getting off punches. We're just like fucking strangling each other. So we fucking, we, we tear his kitchen apart. Plates, fucking glass falling everywhere. And I'm in the wrong, so I'm going to leave. He goes, get the fuck out of here. You're on medication. I'm like, all right, I'm leaving. He goes, get the fuck out of here. You're on medication. Now we're outside. I'm like, all right, dude, shut the fuck up. He's like, you stole my medication. I'm like, don't fucking say it again. Your neighbors don't need to hear. Right. He's like, get out of here. You stole my medication. I'm like, cocksucker. I ran back in and I speared him into his couch. And the fight's <laughs> on again. We're fighting, fighting, fighting. Fight back through the kitchen. Psh, table falls over. Glass is shit. Breaking. Da, 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 da. We fight into his bedroom. And there's like a look, so on his wall, he's got like swords and knives and daggers and shit hanging up. So there's like a little, there's a little space between his bed and the wall. And I get back there and I'm like, so in my head, I'm like, if I could, I could just open up, I could open up on him with my hands. I'm like, but I probably shouldn't because I'm in the wrong in the first place. So as this is going on in my head, we lock eyes. He takes a sword and goes, whoom, swings it out my head. I slip it. I'm like, really, dude? A fucking sword? You're going to swing on my head? Fuck you. Sorry. And I'm like, I'm like, you know what, dude? We're not even friends anymore. I'm like, you're going to cut my head off? Fuck. And I started walking. I was like, JC, no, come back. Hey, come on, dude. I'm like, no, man. It's fucking horseshit. We were just fucking fighting. Now you're going to swing swords and shit? And uh, so, so I fucking, so I got like, you know, I, I, I pretended to like walk off like half a block away. He's called me. He's like, come on, John, please come back. I swear. So I came back. And I'm like, all right, dude, it's like, you know, oh, so dude. that was a sword story. If, oh. if I didn't fucking duck like that, he would have got me. You know, right? Yeah, for real. We got a good question here for our buddy Rex. Did Chris ever dread having Tammy around when dealing with agents? He dreaded having Tammy around dealing with anyone because <laughs> <laughs> because there were you got there was a point in time where people just wanted to use him and not her, and she would show up and demand to get paid. And that would put my brother in a weird fucking spot, obviously. Obviously. And put her looking shitty. And so she, that's, she was such like an agent of chaos. Like, like you know, again, this is like around when I started like working. And so it would, when she'd come along, she's like, well, I'm here. I, I, I you know, you have to pay me. And they're like, but we didn't, we don't want to use you. Like, so that was, so the, what, what was the question? Was it the shit? Um, whenever there was agents, I mean, did your brother deal with agents or like? No, 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 not agents. I'm promoters is what I'm talking. You know, promoters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not yeah. agents, but like promoters. 
because you, you met my, my brother's the nicest, most affable, you know, didn't take himself too, self too seriously, loved to joke, mm. laugh, have a good time. Mm. And, uh, and, you know, she was the opposite, always just looking to start trouble. You know what I mean? Where she would do shit like that and just show up and, and demand to get paid when, Jeez. you know, she wasn't even booked. So, yeah, he, he fucking dreaded it. And then sometimes, uh, again, it, it put him in a weird place because he had to, like, stand up for her at the same time, knowing he was in the wrong, pull the guy aside, be like, listen, you know, it, was, it, it, it sucked. Oh, I can just it, imagine. My yeah. philosophy in wrestling is one foot in, one foot out. Like, you have your private life, love life, and then you have business. Right. Don't mix it. That, that works for me. I've been married for 14 years. and Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So. Yo, exactly. I freaking, uh, what do you call it? I got divorced, and part of it was because, you know, of, of the whole wrestling business. I have one foot in, one foot out. Right, you know? right. But, what did he say? Did Chris Candido like his time in Smoky Mountain Wrestling? Yeah. Oh, he fucking loved it. He thought it was great. Yeah. You know, even when they uh, they had the, the they, they called him a crybaby, and the loser has to wear a, a baby bonnet. Right, right. Yeah. And he he fucking loved it. He saw it as like the way like you know the Mexican wrestlers, the luchadors never take their masks off. He would go to at the time he was going to college, he'd go to school with the baby bonnet on. People would make fun of him, you know. He'd go to the store with it on. Like he took it super seriously. Wow. And uh, what's funny was too like c- uh, coming from Jersey, like I remember when he went to Smoky Mountain, we took a trip out there to see him, right? And my my family isn't big wrestling fans, but you know. We had tickets to the show. We we walk into the place, and uh, I remember before the show starts, we see these these young looking girls. My, my mom's like, "Hey, do you know where you know suit uh, seat two A is?" The girls like, "Yeah, right here, honey. You can come with us." As soon as the show started, they're like, "Dirty white boy, you got bigger titties than my mama. You sack of shit!" And they're like, "People are going crazy, throwing shit." I'm like, whoa, <laughs> this is this is different than this is like in Tennessee, in, in right? Jersey. Yeah, it was in Tennessee. Yeah, right. Like, this is this is different than it was in you know in New Jersey. Everybody's yeah. throwing stuff, screaming, yelling, da 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 da. You know, mm-hmm. Chris, you cry, baby, son of a bitch, fucking shit, yelling. And then, <laughs> and he would do so like different shit. Got over there, then yeah. got over here. Right. Like you know, like I remember my brother telling me, you know, I say he was working Tracy's mother's. Tracy's mother's goes to the outside. My brother hits the ropes. Does the fucking helo over the top? Here's nothing. Crickets. The fans don't pop at all. Right. right. And Cornette or whoever was talking to him was like, next time, baseball slide out of the fucking ring. Um, miss the guy, get mad, kick the steps, and then sell your foot. So he did right. that, kick the steps, stole his foot, and everybody's like, boo, cry. Like that, that guy, a huge ovation. Yeah. As opposed yeah. to the shit that's gonna break your freaking back, you know? Right. It was more that that's where he kind of developed the, you know, work smarter, not harder kind of right. deal. But he still worked hard as shit either way, you know. See, that and was like add a little bit of comedy into it. That was the beauty of the territories, man. You could work different styles all over the country, like, or even in Canada, too, right? Different parts of Canada. Like Stampede had a different style, which was like Dynamite Kid style. And the Maritimes here was different. It was more like a Southern style. Fuck. But yeah, I, I remember watching your brother, like, in, uh, especially now that I'm older, I'll watch some of his old stuff, and he could adapt to so many different styles, right? Because he was such a student of wrestling, like, yeah, he needed to know, like, so uh, up in our old office, there's wrestling magazines mm. from the '60s, uh, like, like the '70s, all the way up to the early 2000s, n- not one missing. There's oh. when when he was when he wasn't. So he 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 would like compile all his matches and make like a greatest hits like highlight reel, mm. and and send it off. This is when he's a teenager. Send it off to. I remember watching one of them with him. He he did one to that rat song, round and round, and right. Sending it out right. And I remember watching it. Him being seventeen, me being seven, and half of it is him taking backdrops and you know getting hip tossed. I'm like, cook. Nobody's gonna hire you with this piece of shit. You're getting your ass kicked like half the time. He's like, I gotta show him I can take bumps, you know. And I didn't know I was young. I'm like, right. I'm like, yeah, but you're this guy's beating you up here. Like, why would you try to get hired from this fucking video? But he, but he would make like compilations of his best moves and bumps and send them all out to different promoters. 
Right. And, you know, just show up at shows. If there was wrestling. So as kids, our family would take us on trips to Puerto Rico or wherever. In Puerto Rico, he didn't want to go snorkeling or do whatever. He wanted to go where the wrestlers were and go to the hotel where, like, and they would take him. And he would go to the meet and greets and go here and go there. That's all he cared about. Just like love, love the business, right? He loved the business, and and he would write in all the different, you know, in all the different wrestling magazines. He changed all the all the rankings himself, and then <laughs> he would he would write uh, he would write up his own he's like his own TV show. You know, he'd be like you know Bruiser Brody promo, uh, you know, Carlos Colon versus Abdul the Butcher commercial break, but and he would just you know just like fantasy book all these shows as a kid, like that's all he gave a shit about. I would do the same thing, but I would do it with finishes. I would write out different finishes, like in my mind. And just write yeah, out. yeah. We got a good question here. Hey guys, question for Johnny: When your brother Chris was working in TNA, did he ever talk about becoming a manager and working with the Naturals to you? And do you have any stories about them also? Yeah, uh, I think um, so. He loved it. The more he was involved, the happier he was. Yeah. And uh, so he, he loved being able to be the, so you got to figure at this time, you know, the, the drug shifts behind him and he's like, just so freaking full of energy and like nothing ever lost his love for the business, but he, f it was reinvigorated. So he'd yeah. go out there and have a match. Then he'd be the, then he'd manage the naturals and, you know, he'd be their mouthpiece and then he'd go, you know, do a promo for something. So he, he loved it. Yeah. All, all the stories, about about him with the naturals were all just positive because he'd come back and I, like so like right when he got hired with tna like after a couple of weeks he's like he's like yeah dude in a couple of weeks i'll get you down here i'm like dude please for once just like put yourself first you know get because mm -hmm. before that you that's when we, we saw you and when i met you at raw before he we went to TNA. yes was backstage yes yeah yeah and so he talked to jr and jr's like we're gonna we have something for you just like not right this second, maybe like in a couple months, but it can't, it's not going to hurt you to go over there being TNA. It's not going to hurt you to go over there and, you know, we'll be here, go get some, go work there if they're offering you a paycheck right now. So yeah. he did. And then, uh, but no, he, he loved his time with the naturals. The, both those dudes were cool as hell and they were both great workers. And again, he loved doing you know, he, he would, he'd have a match, then he'd manage them and cut their promos and do this and do that. So the busier he was, the happier he was, you know? Mm. Yeah. That's the life of a wrestler. When, when you're busy and it's the greatest business in the world, but then when you're, you got nothing going as you want to put a bullet in your head, right? Right. And that's where Somas came in, you know? Brother. <laughs> Why was Chris and WCW only for a few months? So, so, uh, like, around this time, this is, uh, what, 2002? I'm around. No, nah, this is a little before that. He, yeah, 2001, uh, they shut down, right? Yeah, 2001. So, he was he was there for, for a little bit. Then there was some heat because they found uh, needles. Orange, in right? Yeah, they found needles in, yes. in, in the fucking bathroom. Right. But, uh, but it wasn't his or, or hers. It was in the women's bathroom. It wasn't hers. She didn't do Newbane. Dude, I'm, my fucking phone just went to ten. I'm gonna go. Uh, go. I'm gonna go in my car and plug my phone in so I don't fucking lose you guys. Okay. All right. All right sorry about that. Uh, no, no, I get this, uh, happens to me all the time, dude. All right, hold up. Sorry. That's okay. So yeah, I remember hearing that story. Um, who was saying? I think it was Kimberly Page. That yeah. That hold that came through and they had found a syringe in one of the bathroom stalls in the ladies' locker room, and they I just assumed that it was Tammy's. Because they came in with the rep, right? They Yeah, they, they put the heat on him, or they put the heat on her for the new bane, but it wasn't theirs. Um, okay. And I know, I would know if she fucking did it, because, you know, she didn't kayfabe me about anything. Why would she kayfabe me about that, you know? Right, right, right. So, and and, like, later on, somebody said that it was theirs but so after after wcw shut down he was still under contract and getting paid oh so he, he signed so 
one of those Turner contracts where it's like you're guaranteed if you sign a two year deal, you're being paid no matter what, right? Are you there? Dude, can I hear you? You know. Okay. Hold on. Can you hear me? Let me see here. Yeah. I just got a new car too. Is this gonna be charging? Okay. All right, we're good. Sorry about that. Right, no problem. So I'm sorry, what was the question? Um WCW. Why did it why not were they last only months? I think because it it folded and then uh and then he was still getting paid because he was under contract and then he was going to Japan and then right. after he all was working for New Japan, right? Yeah, yep. He was having some great matches there. And again, I think Tammy effed that up for him. Oh, let me see no I way. Here. What'd she do? I don't know. Because so anytime he would go to Japan, he'd always say, you know, he would be like, Johnny, you know, take Tammy out. Make sure she, well, he'd be like, yo, make sure she doesn't fucking burn the house down. And, uh, you know, I'm going to Japan. So he would go, he would come back, you know, make really good money. And then she went with him one time. No. Never went again. So I don't, I don't know. This is like, again, around 2002. And I, I remember this because on, on one of the times when, when, when they were in, when, you know, when he was in Japan and she was here, yeah. I, I was 20, me and my friends, uh, it was around midnight and we needed to get more beer and me being fucking stupid. I'm like, yo, let's ta let, let, let Tammy get us some beer. But the only place that was open was a bar that sold package goods. So I, I take, I take Tammy over to the bar. I'm like, yo, here's like 50 bucks. Go inside and get us a, you know, whatever, a couple 30 packs. Yeah. So I'm waiting, waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. She's not coming out. I go in the bar, and she's sitting at the bar drinking. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? I'm like, get the beer. Let's get the fuck out of here. And she runs away from me. There's these guys playing pool, and she slaps all the pool balls off the pool table. Now the guy's like, yo, bitch, we're fucking, we're playing for money, you crazy fucker. And I'm like, yo, don't talk to her like that. So I'm about, I'm getting in a fight with these guys because of what she just did, right? My friend Sue comes over, tries to defuse the situation, and is like, uh, oh, Tammy, I've been to your house. You have a lovely house. And she's like, you've been to my house? And she looks at me and just tees, starts attacking me. I'm like, holy shit. So I carry her out of the place. I drive. She's trying to punch me while I'm driving. And then here's the cold card, right? So we get back to my brother's house. He's in Japan. She sits on the couch. She's like, Johnny, I'm really sorry about that shit I just pulled. Could I have a hug? I'm like, yeah, I'll give you a hug. I go to give her a hug. She goes, Dish! palm strikes me right in the fucking nose. She goes, palm strike. Al, Sh Al Snow showed me that. I was so pissed. I freaking ran over to the door. I punched like 10 holes in and ripped it in half. As She's like <laughs> laughing. Yo, Paul London. What up, Paul brother? London's in the house. Yeah, I, remember, I remember you telling me this story one time. And I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, there we were talking about my brother going to Japan and then me having to look after Tammy and, you know, make sure she doesn't fucking burn the house down while he's gone. And, I mean, I was the genius that took her to the bar that sold beer at midnight. <laughs> well, you know, what are you going to do? On a side note, Paul London shaved and he looks about 25 years old. Amazing. Dude, good for you. Good shave for Johnny. <laughs> Dude, you know, you know what was funny? For some reason... I thought you, we were like, yo, let's make some fucking music. I thought you rapped too. That's why I was like sending you verses. I'm like, I'll rap this verse. You rap that one. It's funny you mention that because I have a, a friend in Denmark who wants me to rap on a, on like an album of his. And so I'm not a freestyle uh, rapper, but I can, I can, I can, rap, Paul. I, I can, Dude, I'll, I can I'll, you know. I'll help you out. I'll, I'll, I'll write your verses. Because I remember I was like, because uh, I know Nas and Scarface had, a, I'm like a hip hop historian too. Nas and Scarface had a song. Scarface is from Texas. So I like wrote the bars. I'm like, yo, you could be Scarface. I'll be Nas. And when I got nothing back, I'm like, oh, wait, maybe he doesn't know rap. <laughs> but, no, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, 
I like. I mean, I'm more of like Memphis style rap. I think that's more my preferred style rap. But um, it's not my first genre of choice. I do enjoy it though more than a lot of others. But uh, but I, you know, I like singing um, more than just more than anything. I guess just singing. But uh, okay, I, well, yeah. let's make a pact. If all three, yeah, dude, let's make a fucking let's album. See, let's go to karaoke. We'll see who's the best karaoke. -er. I'm pretty you know fucking good. Karaoke. Last time I was at karaoke, I was spitting out some Steven Seagal songs. <laughs> <laughs> we got another question. How you doing, fellas? What are some wrestlers you regret not getting to work with? God bless, fellas. Also, Renee, did your thoughts on AEW brand split? Um, I don't know what that. Any wrestlers you regret not getting to work with? Anybody? I got to work with Bammer, which was pretty awesome. That would be awesome. Wait, with who? Yeah. Bam Bam. 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 Oh, man. At, at, that at, the been awesome. Amazuris, at the Amazura Center in Jamaica, Queens, I was so fucking stoked. Man. Uh, I don't know. You guys are more seasoned than I am. You know, I was no, like, I mean, in the Spence business. For, yeah. I, I mean, mean, I was. With, I mean, you're I worked, here. I, love, I, I would love from, your brother, man. Your brother would have been, like, ideal never, to work. You never, you never worked with my brother. No, we were just on the same, like, couple same shows, uh, but in separate matches. But we never, ever got to lock up, and he was always oh, on dude. my. Show, so he, w he was so good, and I know that because I didn't know shit. I just knew like wrestling him in the backyard and fucking around, taking bumps on the beach and stuff. And uh, <laughs> the the fr the first match I ever had, like I drove him to the show in Rochester. His car was in the shop or something. And he gets there, he's like, ah, I don't know any of these guys. Uh, I'll just work with you for the main event. I'm like, really? Is that going to be, like, cool? He's like, yeah, yeah, just fucking pretend we're in the backyard, whatever. And <laughs> we did. I was, uh, you know, it was like, like you know, he was feeding, bumping, feeding, bumping. I was tazplexing him. You know, he's missing the, the, the diving headbutt, feeding up for more shit. Like, it was, uh, I think my first, like, seven to ten matches were against him. Wow. And then, and then I really got to work him because he's like, because I'd be like, dude, let's, you know, after I got a couple matches, I like, you know, I got a couple moves I like to do. I'm like, let's do that gimmick where you come out of the corner, I give you the overhead. He's like, no, just call it on the fly. The finish is a sunset flip. I'm like, yeah, but how about if I, he's like, hey, just shut up, just fucking listen to me. <laughs> so then he freaking blew me up. It just ran me ragged. I got back to the locker room, puked, and it was kind of one of those things where he showed me that there's like levels to this, you know. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, That's he such was art, though, man. To be able to do that, like your brother was like really a an in ring master of like that old school, the way of like how working should be, you know. Yeah, I, I was telling him before, like m my brother started like like professionally wrestling when he was thirteen. He used to hold show. He used to have shows in our town, and Bam Bam is from two towns over. So my brother was thirteen. Bam was like. 20, 21, who was like semi established. Balls Mahoney is, comes from a town over. He'd work on the shows. Like, my brother had a one track mind, just pro wrestling and, and lifting, lifting weights. He was big into like power lifting, you know? Mm, mm. Oh, Paul, you, 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 you've you read the book that yeah. I have a lot of funny stories in there. The, so good. I, uh, the dude, my, my favorite one that I still laugh at, Renee. I, I don't know if you read if you read the book, but it's funnier if I tell it. Okay. Um, my uh, because I'm drinking, it made me think of this. <laughs> so when I was in when when my, when my brother was in the Smoky Mountain, there was this dude Bruiser Bedlam, right? Yeah, and he had like uh, dude had like a he had like a 700 pound bench, like something crazy. Hmm. And uh, so I'm like nine, and I go there, and he's like, "Hey kid," he's like, "If you're a three plate guy." Don't even talk to me. If you're a four play guy, you can get me a cold drink. If you're a five play guy, we could be boys. I'm like, all right. And I asked my brother, I'm like, what's a five play guy? He's like, he means like bench 500 pounds. I'm like, what's your max? He's like, it's 505. I'm like, all right. So I'm 20. I'm at the gym. I'm, I'm gassed up for the first time. And uh, so anyway, I get five plates on there. It's 495. I put an extra five on either side. I bang out a double. I'm like, fucking five play guy like one of the fucking best things in my life just happened <laughs> so we go we go to this i'm 20 we go to this place barry's bar 
which is right down the street from the gym to celebrate me my brother and balls and uh my brother he doesn't really drink he had like a shot and a beer and he's like bartender check out my little brother man he's 20 years old just bench 500 pounds check him out 20 years old bench 500 pounds bartender's like how how old is he goes, he's 20 man he's 20 look at the size of him show him your arms show me your arms check him out dude he's huge how old is he? I was like, are you fucking deaf? He's 20 years old. Uh, you know, I'm telling you. And he's like, what are you kicking my stool for? I'm like, listen, dickhead, the drinking age is 21. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and the guy's like, yeah, that's what I thought. All right. You know, it was just, it was funny. So Charles wants to know, what was Chris's favorite promotion to work for? Was it ECW? Yeah, it, had, it would have to be ECW. Because Even you know, after, because I heard stories that like, well, it was it was in the, the in the dark side documentary. Like they were, oh, paying what, for all the boys' flights on their American Express, and then they got fucked over. Man, did they? Yeah, end up yeah. Their home because of it. What's that? Did they end up losing their house because of it? Yeah, yeah, they did. Yep. Oh, and it, it's it, it it fucking sucks. Yeah. But yeah, it it sucks a lot. And, but it's just so crazy to think at that age that, you know, if we're talking about purely from, like, who we like to work with in the locker room and all that shit, ECW would would be his favorite. Because he, he loved working with Sabu and Van Damme and Taz. He, he, you know, he, and you know what? It's hard to say because he just loved wrestling. So it didn't really matter who, what locker room he was in. Right. As long as there was a wrestling ring and he got to wrestle someone, he right. would he was happy about it, you know? And like I said, he never took himself himself too seriously. He took what he did seriously, but he, you know, never. Yeah, that's refreshing. Like that, that, you know, people, like when guys in the locker room all like, "Do you know who I am?" Yeah. Right, Paul. Well, uh, <laughs> like because like down here, like, like I, you know, again, everybody should know him as Cook, who hangs out at the South End. Like they, like everybody grew up with him. They, they didn't like all my friends and his friends. They knew he did wrestling, but they didn't like watch it or anything. So right, he, you right. know, they didn't give a shit. So he kind of just like was very he he rather make a joke and laugh about shit than be serious. Right. So Rex uh, has a valid point. Tammy is a few sandwiches short of a picnic. A few. A few. She is. The, she eats the whole basket like that fucking bear, the cartoon bear. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> He's the slab of baloney, man. Come on. Yeah, no, she's terrible. Dead she's or alive in- store. Now, is she locked up right now? Yeah, she's locked up. And it sucks. So, like, I-, I was watching this fucking unfold. Like, you know, her getting DWI after DWI, stabbing right. the new boyfriend with, not, with uh, fucking scissors or whatever the fuck. And I'm just like, something's going to happen. Right. You know, she's going to get into a car crash, like, I, I didn't know what, but I knew, you know, that something was going to happen. But when I heard that she actually fucking killed somebody, I was like, dude, like, that's so fucking terrible. Like, yeah. and what kills me even more is like the, it doesn't kill me, but I, she, she's like a fucking psycho. Like during the, the body cam footage, I watched it. She's like, they're like, how are you? She's like, I'm fine. I just have a dry mouth. She doesn't like, she's like, can I have my water? She doesn't like ask like what happened with the fucking car oh, crash. There's no, yeah, I remember that. There was like absolutely yeah. no thought or empathy or thought that she hurt somebody. And right, like she's just like, yeah, can you give me some water? And that's and, like and the, the thing, traits of a psychopath, like you said, right? When there's no empathy about anybody else but themselves. Yeah. And I actually looked like the psychopath checklist. Like there was right. one. It's like it's like uh, it's like glib like you know, can be charming on the outside, but really, like, has no feelings inside. They can imitate feelings, but they really don't have them. I feel like all of them, like, they live, like, a parasitic lifestyle. They kind of just, like, go from, like, boyfriend to boyfriend. They love chaos. Like, dude, all of them are her. Like, right down the fucking... Wow. I, I, and I think that she thinks she's going to get out of this somehow. Were there ever like, moments in, um, in, 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 if I'm speaking out of line, like, please... You can tell me to fuck off, but I was just curious if there were ever moments when, when like, I mean, I'm sure you and your family talk to Chris and yeah, you know, all the fucking time. I'm like, you know, like you can do like we think you could do better than this. You know, obviously he had of feelings. Loved her, like I get it, like that. He, I mean, that's 
sometimes when you're love sick, like it's it's um, it's its own kind Dude, of disease, right? We had that we had that all we had that fucking conversation all the fucking time, and especially after she do something fucking completely insane, and so like. It was one of those things, like I said, she'd love chaos. Like, it'd be like, you know, Johnny, go get Cook and Tammy and, you know, pick them up for Thanksgiving. And we get in the car. My brother would be like, hey, you know, Tammy, don't get gimmicked up in my parents' fucking house. And we're driving, and then I see her in the back seat, fucking. Uh, and both of us are like, fuck, we got to go to 7 Eleven. We're getting coffee, Red Bull. Like, she just, and then me and his, like, yeah, she looks all right. It's a lot different than our whole family, like, all right, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, she, I don't know, she just, like, loved fucking chaos. And, of course, all of us did. Like, especially when he stopped, like, doing everything and she was just, like, man, eh, nagging, being a pain in the ass. We'd come back from the gym. We'd stop at his at his one buddy's, like, bar and grill. And this one chick, like, really dug him. Like, she knew him from high school. And I'm like, Cook, dude, like, why don't you go with fucking, you know, what's her name? And he's like, dude, I can't, like... And he he always just be like, I brought her into this business, and I feel like you know I gotta, you know, I feel like I have to like see it through. Like of course, like me and him gotten a, like a handful of fights over it. Yeah. You know? Well, hold on I'm a second. Wasn't it, it wasn't it Jim Cornette's idea to to use Tammy, not Chris's? Yeah. She went down yeah. there with yeah. him to be supportive, but it was really Jim that wanted to put her on camera, right? Yeah. I, the, the story goes like, uh, you know. Jim couldn't pay my brother enough that would that would give him enough money to to live there like on his own and like sustain himself and pay rent and like food and shit but he's like but if you he's like if you if if your girl wants to come and you know we could use her she's you know she so he's like I can pay both of you and you could you know you guys could make enough money to live here so I you know I mean I'm not gonna put it on him she you know she made her own choice and I was right. telling you before, Renee. I don't know if I, if I, if I was telling Renee before, Paul. Like, she was going. I remember this conversation happened at my house because when my brother was about to go to Tennessee, she was going to go to Miami, and be in medical school. And my, I forget if it was my family or my mom or whoever was like, Chris, you know, like, if she wants to do this, you guys have to break up. If you're if you're dead set on going to Tennessee, you can't make her go with you. And I remember him like kind of tearing up and I'm like what's going on bro he's like me and Tammy might break up you know she might go to she might go to Florida and I might go to Tennessee and I'm like yeah that sucks you know but they this is after they've been dating for like you know not even a year and then instead of going to Florida she went with him to Tennessee wow. so that's how it all got started you know I wonder what it was that changed her mind um because she seems kind of like I mean, I've only met her a handful of times, uh, a few other times with, with Chris, but um, she seems like kind of uh, stubborn, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, so I'm curious and, what changed her mind. And, and to keep it a buck, I don't, I don't even know if she fucking really had a fucking gimmick to go to Miami to be a doctor. That's what yeah. she said. You know what I mean? Right. right. So like, I, don't, I don't know the validity of that. No that's, gimmicks that's needed. Your Man. mom came across so strong in the Dark Side episode. I agree. Everyone else cries. She seems at peace knowing her son was awesome. But yeah, I noticed she, she stayed so, strong. So, like, here, here's the deal with that. Like, I, I, you know, which is, I was, like, tentative to do it. And then they were like, you think you can get your mom on? I was like, Ma, I'm like, you could do it, but you don't have to talk about anything you don't want to. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm like, if you want to just tell him about what it was like when, when he was young growing up and not talk about anything else, that's cool. Like, you know, so that's kind of what she did. She just, I, I didn't like sit in on her interview or anything, but right. I think she just, you know, answered their questions and they asked about Tammy and she said, you know, uh, if you don't have anything nice to say, you don't say anything at all. And that's all she would say about that. So at what point do you think your parents and your rest of your family realized that Tammy was like a psychopath? How, how, uh, how far into, like how soon into the relationship? I'm, I'm, 
I'm trying to think. It, it was maybe a couple of years because in the beginning, she was cool because my brother would go work on uh, on his indie shows. My parents would be like out for dinner. She'd babysit me and my sisters. Um, so here, here was the first the first uh, signs of it, right? So my brother had had a date. My brother had had a date for a senior prom, and uh, then he met Tammy after. You know, after he and the date, you know, said that they were going to go to, going to go to the prom together. Right. So she was giving him shit about going to the prom with some other girl, but he's like, "Look, it. I told her I was going to go, so I'm going to go to the prom." He went to the prom with his chick, and she showed up at his prom, and went in there and was like, "You fucking better leave with me right oh, now." Like so that. Cut a promo on him. Wow. And, uh, you know, when push came to shove, he left with her. And, and left the other girl in the fucking dust. So that was like the first signs of like, she's a bit controlling, you know? Controlling issues, yeah. We got a question here from Ben. Another question for Johnny. Could you go into detail about how the producers of Dark Side of the Ring came up with doing an episode on Chris? Like, yeah, how did they approach you and how was it proposition? <laughs> I'm trying to think of the. Is he, there, so, it's a Canadian television show, right? Canadian producers, right? Yeah. Yeah, but the the one the, the one main fella lives in New York now, because okay. so there was one fellow who called me, Brian Myers, who's uh he's a friend of mine, and he yeah. you know loved my brother's work. He called me, was like, dude, you want to be on, you want to do an episode on Dark Side of the Ring. I'm like, yeah, I'm cool with that. Or I said, like, yeah, I'll talk to the guy, whatever. And so some fella called me, and I I, I talked to him about it. He's like, yeah, we want to do an episode on your brother, like, you know, like Chris Candido, like, you know, your favorite wrestler's favorite wrestler, most underrated wrestler, something like that. And I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it. He's like, can you talk to the uh, – can you, can you talk to – this other fellow who's like the creator of the show, the executive producer. And I talked to him like, yo, where do you, he's like, can you, he's like, can we talk? Like, where do you, you know, can we make this episode happen? I'm like, where do you live? He's like, I live in Brooklyn. I'm like, all right, I live in Jersey. I'll take a ride up there right now. I'd rather talk to you face to face than talk to yeah. you over the phone. And we talked and he's like, dude, like anything you don't want in there, I won't put in there. Um, you know, if you say something and want to retract it later, I'll do that. Like, you know, we want to make this, you know, uh, as uh, we, we want, we want to make a great show. We're not looking for gotcha moments. We want to make a really great show. And I'm like, all right, I'm down. So it, it was the, the, the fella, Evan, he's the one that like convinced me to do it. And I'm, I'm really glad he did because I was really happy with, with my brother's episode. I thought it was, you know, really awesome. And it was like, you know, it was Chris's story and Tammy was in it. It wasn't like, you know, you know, it wasn't like too Tammy heavy. Right, right, right. Which, which I thought was cool, you know, and I think a lot of other people did too. Uh, what do you remember from the time when he was um, going to WWF and getting put with like the Body Donna's gimmick, like? Was he was he happy with that, or was he? I mean, obviously, yeah, yeah. like there is a neat opportunity, is a great opportunity. It's like what we all strive for, right? When we don't know any better. Yeah. Um, but to get put with like a gimmick that I I liked. I mean, I I liked the gimmick. <laughs> um, and then when they bring Doctor come along, you know, it just added kind of a different thing to it, and you know, but it seemed, uh, yeah. I know, like, like, like initially, like when he got signed to WWE. I know he, he, he signed the contract first, and I remember my parents being like, "We have to have a lawyer look over this." Da 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 da. And one of our neighbors is a lawyer. They looked over this, like Chris. You know, you shouldn't sign this. They can terminate you for any reason, whatever. Yeah, but, you can't. Uh, sue them if you die, like you can't sue them for any reason. Like it's yeah, the worst yeah. contract imaginable. And you know, he's pretty much like, "This is the only show in town. This is what I'm going to do." Yeah. And um, so. I remember he when he that day he came home. He was in all WWF gear, WWF hat. Um, he was stoked because you know 
at that time he was friends with Shawn Michaels. He was friends with all these guys. Like they all had, you know, they were they're all boys. So in the beginning he was stoked, and and the, with the whole gimmick thing, he really didn't give a shit. I mean, he like laughed about the Barry Horowitz thing, because you know, like grown men would like run up to him in the mall and be like, and, like fucking run away. He thought it was funny. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like he didn't he didn't really. I think he saw it more as like him paying his dues, and then, you know, he'll he'll come up and. And, and be able to have more control over his what he got to do. He, he'd much rather be, you know, Chris Candido, no gimmicks needed, or he was Mr. Charisma on the Indies or the Blonde Bomber, or whatever the fuck. He would have liked yeah. to do that better, but he didn't mind it. He, you know, if he did, he didn't care that much to like bitch about it, you know? Yeah, I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was a gimmick that, you know, it wasn't like, like he was a race car driver. Or anything, <laughs> but he's a fitness guru, which he kind of was anyway. But. Right, but I mean, it was colorful, and like I looked at it as kind of more of a, um, kind of a Richard Simmons, uh, you know, before Simon Dean, like like the, just this fitness guru kind of, you know, like in like I I that dude, you know, that dude the Tony Little. Remember that dude yeah, Tony Little with with the yeah, gazelle? Yeah, that, yeah, that, that, that's <laughs> that, that's like what I thought, you know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah he, he thought it was funny because he was a gym rat anyway. You know, all he did was fucking wrestle and lift weights. And that was one of the so. things too that, like, I I thought was so addictive about watching your brother work um, was just that, like, as as great as he was in the ring, <clears throat> and he worked heel, I think a good amount of the time. He was never, and this is for like any wrestlers or young people, like young wrestlers listening or watching, is that. Chris was Chris always gave up the impression that he was never above um I don't want to say looking foolish but being kind of like the butt end of like you know he had like the bonnet on his head when he was I think in Smoky Mountain <clears throat> yeah um he 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 didn't care that you know he he wasn't trying to be the cool heel like everyone tries to be today everyone everyone tries to be the cool heel and everyone wants yeah. to get like like that yeah. son of a bitch, Ace Darling. Ace yeah. Darling, what up, motherfucker? You know, so like you're saying, people were running up to him and being like, "Hey," you know, and all this stuff, and that he liked it. It was like because he he knew that getting heat was really the the ultimate objective. It wasn't about being the cool badass heel that's doing all this cool shit. He didn't mind looking foolish, you know, like which is my favorite kind of heel, kind of the chicken shit heel. Sometimes he could back it up, you know, and he looked legit. Right, he didn't care. He thought it was funny. He liked doing it, you know. Like I said. I was telling him earlier when when he was in Smoky Mountain, he kept the fucking bonnet on. You know, when he when he when he'd go to the grocery store, he'd go to college with the fucking bonnet. Like, you know, oh, okay. like he he saw it as the way like the luchadors won't take their fucking masks off in public. Like he because he lost that match, he's wearing this fucking bonnet. You know, and you're not gonna see him not in the bonnet. And like it's I think it's because he was such a student of the game. Yeah. And he just like, you know. I have every single wrestling magazine from the seventies up to the early two thousands. I have, I, I give like, uh, I know I gave Tommy dreamer a box to like hang on to. I gave uh, a couple guys in town, their old wrestling fan. Like my brother, he had every single wrestling magazine. He, he needed to know everyone who laced up a pair of wrestling boots ever in the history of the world. That's all he fucking cared about, you know? Yeah. So he, he enjoyed doing that stuff. He, you know, it's it's part of being a wrestler, and he, you know, I remember him later on saying he's like, he's like, dude, everybody wants to just be like, you know, like Chris Benoit, tough guy in tights, and he's like that. The, the, everybody just can't be that. He, right. he got to, like, he was very like go with the flow, and and he understood why he was doing, it and he didn't mind doing it. He, he likes it guys? because he looks so. Big and he was Yo, like, Ace, what's up, brother? He looks Guys, solid. In Japan, a young Shibata over Chris, dude. Did you, uh, Paul? Did you ever watch any of Chris's uh, New Japan stuff? No, I haven't. I actually haven't seen it. Um, I know he worked with the great Kali when the great Kali was athletic. Jesus, I've seen some stuff. He would bump around, make that guy look like a million bucks. If you guys knew Chris, if you close your eyes right now 
and listen to Johnny talk. <laughs> the voice, the cadence, the it's you and your brother talk exactly the same. I'm glad Renee let me jump on and, and say something because Johnny, you and I have talked yeah, yeah. Times about your brother, but I'll just tell everybody when I was breaking in, your brother was like the New Jersey guy that all of us wanted to be. I mean, legit, like your brother was the guy that all of us wanted to be like, we wanted to learn from, we wanted to wrestle and getting to know him and be, calling him a friend. He was just a man, bro. He was just the man. He really was. That, that That's so awesome to hear, you know, because he, he, he really was too. Like, you know, if he was a dick, I probably still wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't be out here campaigning to keep his memory alive as much as I was, but he was the, he was so awesome. You know, like, you know how rigorous WWE schedules are. Like, you know, when he was in, in WWF, um, I was like, I want to be a professional baseball player. That's all I gave a shit about. And he'd be like, all right, bud, you know, as soon as I get back, I'll take you to the batting cages. And, you know, sometimes if he came back too late at night, we'd hit, he'd be like, I'm still taking you there. And we'd hit fucking baseballs in the parking lot. Like, he was just really just a genuinely fucking awesome guy, you know? And it's it's great that everybody has such good memories of him. You know what I'm saying? Chris's top row power bomb, absolutely oh, nuts. Uh, Johnny, when was the first time you saw that fucking scary move? CC and Lance nailed that. Yeah. First time I saw it was when the the first night at the ECW arena when I rode with him there in the limo, and I was nervous as shit. Like, I didn't know. I was like, he's going from WWF to this other place. Are they going to know who he is? I'm, like, nervous for him, you know? And then he yeah. worked Spike Dudley. And uh, I was up at the Eagles Nets watching, and he hit the top row powerbomb. I'm like, holy shit. So that was the first time I saw it. And then he, you know, started, you know, using that as his finisher. So that was, yeah, that was the first time I saw the top row powerbomb. Mm. Does he know that he needed from the start? Or was he just... Coming out, it's just straight up Chris Candido, the badass wrestler, like not skip. Came, not skip. He came out as, as Chris Candido, and uh, he he came out and, and, he, and he worked with Spike. I'm not gonna say it was a squash match. Spike got a couple things in, but you know, well, did he, he uh, did they, any, like did he take any jabs at the skip gimmick like on that first? Oh yeah, I know, they, yeah, later yeah. on I think I remember he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 did a couple things, and then for I remember like for Halloween he fucking came back as Skip yes, and was that, doing push ups and fucking all that shit. Oh, that's right. so. Again, he didn't he didn't take himself too too seriously. I remember like like him and Taz would have little like uh, dust ups because you know they'd be working each other, and you know my brother would take like a Ric Flair bump right on his face, and Taz would be like, "What the fuck?" That's when he was like super serious, you know. But yeah. Dude, he's like, we get to wrestle for a living. Why you don't get so mad? You know. <laughs> <laughs> did, he, uh, did, he, did he enjoy? I mean, he must have. I would think he enjoyed his time when he was like with Triple Threat and doing that, oh, yeah, right? Because like, I've yeah. always been a fan of, obviously a Bam Bam, but I've always also been a fan of Shane Douglas. Like, just being around him, and I was originally going to go train with him out of high school, um, but then he tore his bicep, and so that whole thing got. Where was his school based out of? Was it Pittsburgh? Yeah, it was New Brighton. It was him and Dominic Nucci, just outside of Pittsburgh. Um, but then, yeah, he poured twice up, and that put a stop for a lot. But I was just always a fan of the triple threat. And I just thought, like, man, this is legitimately a triple threat, man. Like, this is awesome. So, like, I figured these guys must be having the time of their lives. Well, I was going to say, it's also awesome for my, for my brother and Bammer because – Bammer lives. He, he he grew up and lived two towns away. Like they, my brother had known him since he was 12, 13, and Bammer was twenty. Like Bammer was kind of like my brother's big brother, That's you know, cool. and kind of like an uncle to me. So having him there, I remember the first night that he that he that he uh, what do you call it debuted in ECW, and it was like so cool because I you know my brother had someone there that was like like his ace that you know yeah. like that he'd known forever, like one of his best friends. So, you know, yeah, he, he loved, he loved the triple threat and so did Bam or so did Shane and, yeah. and they all hung out together and yeah, it was cool, man. 
That's awesome. Did you guys cover this before I jumped in? Uh, what about when Chris was a trainer for the WWF? He was training The Rock. He was training a lot of the top guys. Did you guys was cover it really? that? Was it yeah. 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 yeah, I, I think we were talking about that a little bit. Um, after the whole body dominance thing, like, you know, ran its course, he was training The Rock and had The Rock's first couple of matches with him. And The Rock wrote in his book, like, uh, some like Chris Candido was the most professional of professional wrestlers and made me feel professional or some shit like that. Like something like nice. Oh, and uh, so, so Chris had rocks first couple of matches with him and he was training Mark Henry at the same time. And I remember him coming back and telling me about it. He's like, Oh, this guy, the rock, you know, was da da da. He's telling me all good stuff about him. And then he's like, Mark Henry's like, you know, you know, like legit the world's strongest man at the time, Ted Arsini had like a 700 pound bench. And I was like, I thought that was like, you know, insane. And he's, I'm like, he's stronger than Ted Arsini. He's like, yeah, stronger than Ted Arsini. Fucking. Uh. So <laughs> he was having, so w like later on his, he told me his mind state was they, they put him on the back burner and he was training other guys. And he's like, I know I have a small window to like, to, to be a star and like make money. And I don't want to be training other people to be the star. I want to be the one doing it, you know? Yeah. But then if you talk to him years later, he's like, fuck, why didn't I just stay there? Right. But at the time, he was also, you know, 23, 24, 25. Like, he was young. Yeah. So, and, you know, he, he 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 wasn't, like, cocky or a dick, but he knew he was good, you know, because this is, like, his life's passion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was what Here's it was. A question from Ross, fellow Canadian. Thanks, Johnny, for always sharing stories about Chris. He gave us fans so much. More importantly, great person. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. And a lot of Thanks, love brother. for your brother. We got another question. Rex, yeah, did Chris ever express what he wanted to do after wrestling? How close was he to Owen Hart? That's a good question. Oh, no. Him and Owen were tight. He, uh, because Davey Boy used to always rib Owen. And <laughs> Owen would always like this, like, I remember being around him and David were like, he'd be like, here's my impression of Owen. Oh, I'm Owen Hart. I'm the shits. Uh, like Owen, like never thought he was like as good as he was. And I was yeah. like, dude, you're phenomenal. Like, what are you talking about? Um, so my brother and Owen were, were super tight. They were both, you know, like nice fellas, like legit, like nice guys. Yeah. Um, and I forgot the other part to that question. What was that? Um, was yeah, it tight with did him? he have any plans for after wrestling? Because, you know... Oh, wrestling. no. Dude, yeah. before or after, he got a fucking lobotomy. No, he he, he dreamt about... He's going to be like, you know, Freddie Blossie when he gets old with <laughs> fucking rings on, poking a fucking cane at people and cursing them You're all. Right. He was never leaving the business. Hell no. Yeah. Well, Nothing. didn't him and yeah. Tammy own a tanning bed salon? A tanning salon? That's another one of her fucking bullshit. Um, oh. So they, they owned... They, they they bought tanning beds and had them at their house. But when uh, after they came back from Puerto Rico and uh, you know people weren't using her, she worked at a tanning salon. <laughs> so oh, owned a fucking okay. tanning anything. So she, so she that was worked. that's her ego saying that they owned the yeah. salon, not that she had to no. actually get her she job. She fucking worked at the counter and gave people fucking those little goggles and said, "You're in bed three. Okay. Bro, you don't own a tan salon, Renee. Eh? Who, me? Yeah, Mr. Tan. Hey, she seemed to have day. a passion for tanning. Uh, so I got to oh. tell the story. So, Please. So one time I was on the road, and I usually work out twice a day minimum, right? Sometimes three. So I woke up, and the gym was right across the street from our hotel. So I went and did my fasted morning cardio, and... It was tanning for $2. So I said, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll grab a tan. Then I went and did my workout. And then I said, fuck it. I'll, it's only 2 bucks. I'll tan after my workout. And then all the boys got up, and they, they decided to go to the tanning bed before the fucking show. And I said, fuck it. I'll just tan in one of these super beds. So I tanned three times a day. Yeah. Oh, I remember you telling me, too, in Louisville, you had, like, Two like membership to like two or three separate tanning salons because like they yeah. wouldn't allow you to tan within twenty four hours. And I was like, dude, you're gonna like you're gonna fucking cook yourself, man. Like fucking <laughs> die. Oh, or just don't be tanning. I have addiction issues, fellows. Yeah. <laughs> don't we all? 
I was gonna say, fucking amen. Right. Dude, I used to laugh at my brother because he'd go, <laughs> he'd go, he'd be in, he'd be tanning. He'd be like, "Hey, dude, I want to talk to you." I'd go in there, and he'd be fucking butt naked with a little towel over his fucking wiener. And <laughs> I'd, oh, I'd fucking open the door, and all my buddies would come in and be like, "Ah, we'd all fucking laugh at him." Dude, it was, it was just like this brilliant light, and you see this giant guy with just a little towel over the fucking. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do it. Dude, it was, it was so hilarious. You also you don't want to not to get roasted because there's like, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I've burnt the wiener in the tanning salon. You, you know, you don't want to do that. Yo, I'm going to get uh, I'm going to get another drink. Yo, I'll be right back. Okay. All right, man. Um, I'm gonna, there's a question for me. It, I didn't want to bring it up since, you know, Johnny was talking and stuff. So, Renee, would you love to see a run with you as U.S. champ? Yeah, the money's pretty good. I would like to add that, too. The what if, what if, Eddie, Paul thought on the new... Paul, <laughs> did you watch the new Scream? No. I haven't um, watched any of them after part three. Oh. It's just too many... Over, I can't get over how young you look now that you shaved. Mike, Thanks. can you tell how long... Well, the handsome man. My my wife and the neighbor wife know it. They keep asking when my famous friend Paul's coming over. <laughs> I gotta get a booking over there somehow, man. <laughs> and I noticed you and her are, are uh, Instagram friends now, Paul. So yeah, yeah. I, was like, hey, Paul. I was like, okay. I was like, you know, helping my cool with it. And I'm like. Well, I don't want to not. I don't want to not follow her back just because you know. I was like, then I don't. You know, oh, I don't so want to. You're saying she followed you first. That's what you're telling me. I can't remember. <laughs> I think uh, so. I can't remember. Oh, man. I, I saw the last name and I was like, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> Paul London Ace Renee, would you take Chris Candido's finish from anyone other than Chris? No. Yeah, that would be a, that's a scary move to take. I don't think Chris, I'd want to take a power bomb off the top rope. Dude. Yeah, I worked it depends Chris 15 on what, times. Never did that. Yeah, it depends on like what stage of my life or career I was in. Like right now, today, like probably not. Um, right. But if I was going to take one right now, I'd rather take it from Chris than just about anybody. You mm. know. So that's that's definitely a sketchy move. I, I I saw Lance bang his head off the fucking canvas, but. No, sorry. God, I was just picking. There's that one gift no, where fucking right. he gives it to Lance, and Lance fucking his head like knocks like a motherfucker. Well, Johnny, we were texting back and forth like our memories and shit. How fucked up it's like. Hard oh, dude. Breakfast, right? How many? Yeah. How many of his moves did he test on you first? Yeah. Fucking probably all of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, we we live right. Like I said, like we grew up across the street from the beach, so. Fucking well, so every day, depending on the waves, it'd be a new wrestler. It'd be like, oh, today's Roddy Piper waves because they'd be like really good. And if they were like shitty waves, it'd be like, oh, Ultimate Warrior waves. He's, he's the shits. <laughs> or like, <laughs> like, but yeah, no, he'd fucking pick me up, power bomb me over waves, um, taking snap suplexes when it's low tide. Yeah, I, I, I took a lot of his shit <laughs> first, you know, on the beach. You know, in the fucking quite a lot of girls, or like maybe some fake tough guys would come up, or just some other. I mean, I would think that would attract people of all size, you know, of all types. But I would, I would imagine like that. Would oh attract no, it attracted people. people of all types. Like when, when we were younger, there'd be like a line of people, like yo, cook, fucking throws over waves. So we had like plenty of people to just fucking throw around and shit, <laughs> you know. But. Yeah, trying new moves. No, so when I was, like, when we were little, uh, I was always Big John Stud when we fucking played wrestling. And uh, he would always be, like, Doug Summers or fucking Buddy Rogers. But then sometimes, if he was Kamala, that was my ass. He'd give me the fucking nerve pinch that I couldn't get away from. <laughs> but, <laughs> yo, funny story, right? That fucking, I, I told this before, but it's worth telling again. So my brother used to he, he used to take food coloring and put it in his mouth. The green or the or the blue food coloring would tend to be the great Muda and fucking <laughs> fucking right. spit that shit in my face, right? <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, the day of my my little sister's 
uh, baptism. I, I got a suit. I'm, I'm going up to run up to his room to show him how nice I look. As soon as I open the door, he goes, Phew, and he covers my fucking suit in green. Oh, fucking man. suit color. So fuck. he's like, he's like, fuck, fuck, mom's going to kill me, right? So he fucking, he, he grabs me, we run back into the garage. He takes like Comet Cleanser. He fucking scrubs all the shit off me, right? So I get all the green off me. Fucking, I'm dry. We're good to go to the, to the bap to the baptism together, right? <laughs> so like two days later, I climb up and I get the food. No, so before this, I'm like, how do you do that mood of mist? Can you show me? He's like, yeah, just take a little bit of the food coloring and just, you know, spit it in the air. I'm like, all right. So a couple days later, I, I climb up, you know, into the fucking shelf. I get the food coloring and I dump a bunch of it in my mouth. I run up, brrr, up all the stairs, run up in his room, bust the door open him and some chick both pop their heads up out of bed and i run over and i go and a tiny bit got on him it fucking all got on her and i fucking booked it right <laughs> i ran down his stairs down the other stairs i ran to the front porch and then he caught my ass on the front porch and kicked the shit out of me and gave me the kamala nerve pinch and fucking but it was worth it because it was fucking funny as hell you know because the, the red mist was the really bad one that, that used to burn the baby faces the most, right? Mm. What's that? The, so it was the red mist. Jerry. Yeah, the, the red mist. I, for some reason, we were we were big into the green. The green was the first food coloring to go. Yeah. You know? Your mom's trying to make like like a, a cake for someone's right? birthday. Like, where the, where the fuck all I have is fucking red food coloring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, another funny story. He beat the shit out of some fucking... So... I was like seven or eight, which means he was like 17 or 18. And I was shooting hoops by myself at the fucking basketball courts, like a, a block and a half away. I'm shooting hoops by myself in this fucking car full of fucking like teenagers drives by and like, hey, fuck you, fat boy, whatever they said. And I gave him the finger. I saw, I remember I just saw this shit on HBO and I gave him the finger, right? And these fucking guys stopped the car. They got out, fucking pushed me on the ground, smacked me, fucking bounced the ball off my head. I'm like, I'm going to get my brother to come kick your fucking asses. I'm like, good, go get your brother. I'm like, all right, I will. So I fucking came back home. I'm like, hey, Cook, these guys just kicked the shit out of me at St. Catherine's uh, basketball courts. He's like, fuck, I, where are they? I'm like, they're at St. Catherine's. So we run, get into his Monte Carlo. He fucking sp speeds the block away. So there's four, there, there's four of them, and they're standing in a circle. He he hops the fence, the, the fucking gate's right here, but he just hops the fence. He goes, boom, 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 knocks three of them out, and then one goes tearing off running down, and he's fucking chasing the guy, and I'm chasing him, and uh, he finally catches him on the side of the schoolyard. He's got him up against the wall, and he's like, B-bish, 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 <laughs> and drops that guy, <laughs> and then me and him went back to his car and drove away. That's he, awesome. like, fucking laid all of them out. It was fucking awesome. I love yeah, they shouldn't have beat the shit out right of like a seven or eight year old, you know? What the fuck? Climbs over the gates <laughs> right there. I love it, dude. Yeah, they were they were all like standing around. He just jumps over. Push, push, push. <laughs> Here's a good question: What was Louis Spicoli like in ECW and WWF? Did you spend much time? And uh, Mike, yeah, did you get to work with Rad Radford in WWF. Yo, Louis was very similar to my brother, like very like um, gregarious fun loving like like i remember driving with uh, i gotta look, 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 look up what gregarious means <laughs> sorry go ahead it means like 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 over the top like, like the free birds music would come on the two of them would fucking pretend to be God. michael hey in the fucking front right. seat like they were just like very uh louis was like very fun loving and loud again not a guy who took himself too seriously took wrestling seriously but then but would rather like joke around have a good time you know like louis was a really a happy fellow for like lack of a better term mm. he, yeah so I, I yeah i spent a lot of time with louis he, and he's funny as hell too you know um, so I, this is a question from australia dude all the best bro. chris complain about his time in wcw i was gonna ask about nah. WCW. what was he, his, he, what he, was his he never really complained about anything um, so I, I know in WCW, those were some of the most like fucked up times Yeah, because, um, 
He left ECW. He went there. He fucking he had a fucking arm injury, and uh, and I, so I, I I'm trying to think back. He, he had this fucking arm injury, and he I think he hurt it by working with Chronic or something like that. He has yeah, arm I, fucking bad. I told you that story. Remember? I saw your oh, brother's right. show. I'm like, Chris, what happened to your arm? He goes, Chronic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it was like it was one of those deals where. They were like, uh, you know, can you fucking, you know, whatever, be here on Monday. He's like, but I'm injured really bad. And they're like, all right, but can you make it still, you think? <laughs> and they're like, uh, he's like, uh, I don't know. And they're like, well, you think you could do it? And he's like, yeah, all right. And he like took his cast off and worked before his arm got healed. Um, his time in WCW, I think he thought it was all right. The pay was good. Um yeah. He didn't yeah, fucking complain. There, didn't he? I remember him having like a some sort of like Matt of Terry Funk. I think it was like. I was gonna say yes. That yeah, he fucking he talked about that all the fucking time. Him fuck and Terry off. Funk had like had like a barnyard brawl or some shit. Yes. And, uh, and he got like fucking by a horse or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> fucking, they're fucking <laughs> fighting, and Terry Funk gets thrown in by the horses. One of the horses fucking bugs out and kicks Terry Funk in the fucking head. Holy shit. And, uh, yeah, and uh, and I remember, <laughs> I remember Terry Fox like, man, I feel so bad. I scared that horse. And he's the fucking <laughs> there's like a there's like a damn horseshoe imprint on his fucking face. He's like, I didn't mean to scare it. I didn't, I didn't want to kick get kicked by it. I feel but, like yeah. close calls with the horse as well, if I remember correctly. And that was like that was a fucking fun match, man. Like that. Yeah, that's they were both in there. Yeah, yeah. Was... nobody's smarting the horses up that you aren't supposed to fucking kick people. Because there was like <laughs> hooves fucking flying left and right. Yeah, don't ever get behind a horse. If you're going to go near right? a horse on the side. Or I know that, and I fucking live by the beach. I never saw a real horse in my life. Right, anyway, right. You get behind it, they fucking kick you. Yeah, dude, I just remember seeing that. I was like, oh, shit. Like, oh. <laughs> and yeah, then he got one put his you, face Paul. in the horse shit. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you did that shooting star press at the Royal Rumble 2006, were you pissed nobody caught you? I, I was pissed after the fact. Um, not really pissed. To be honest with you, I had so much adrenaline doing it that it was more so I didn't – I had so much adrenaline when it happened. I didn't really feel – like it didn't hurt. That you know, I just kind of moved out of the way, but then like it was more so. I got more pissed watching it back because then I would see like I think I think Jamie and Funaki were like the only two that really made like an effort. But then you would see like you know I love him, but like man, you'd see like Nunzio like nowhere near the thing, and he would like just crumble down like nobody even touched him, and it's like you know. Uh, so it was that was the thing that I was kind of like, man, why? Why are these guys like such fucking pussies? Um, you know, so but like Jamie and and actually no, it wasn't it wasn't it was I think it was just Jamie uh, oh, that caught me. Yeah, I was about to say Funaki was never really known as a good catcher either. It's like Funaki, he might have been one of the Phantom Crumbles as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, that wasn't. Yeah, I think I got in trouble for that too. Actually, fuck it. Ross, um, thank you. When did uh, uh, when did Chris start wearing the uh, the Terry like striped tights? So like, oh the candy the candy cane tights. Yeah, because that was like so, a Terry. He was a fucking huge fan of Terry Funk growing up, like Absolutely. huge fan of Terry Funk. And when they got to work each other, he was like, "Yes, I get to," you know. I I remember me and Terry Funk were talking about. It. He's like, he thought it was. Fun, he'd like imitate me, wear my clothes and shit. And uh, so he just used it as a way to fucking wear Terry Funk pants. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it was just, it, it, that's kind of how it was. And then he worked that, that little program with Terry Funk and just kept all the different Terry Funk pants to work in. I thought it looked great. He was a big fan yeah. of Terry Funk, you know. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Great. Chris would wear that stuff though to Applebee's after the show. Oh, I know. Yeah, right? Dude, yeah, always. Yeah. Yes. To get Applebee's. He would oh. never. Yo, fucking. Here's another fucking wrestling story that 
is like unable to be told because like people don't understand it because it's fucking wrestling. Yeah. I remember like so me and my brother fucking we had a well he had a fucking double shot and I was driving with him and the first one it was like a it was a double shot you know by accident but one was at 15x that which is Jersey City and one was at exit one this is on the turnpike in New Jersey which is far as fuck from each other right yeah. so he's gonna work crowbar and Norman Smiley in the at the first show right so I'll try to speed it up. He works Norman Smiley and Crowbar in the first show in a three-way. I'm fucking, I'm his manager. We get in the car. We start driving to exit one, which is like fucking two hours away. And uh, we're driving, my car's on E. I'm like, dude, we have to stop and get gas. Like, this, we're not going to make it there. He's like, dude, I, I, we need this fucking payday. Let's go. So I'm driving, driving, driving. We get off exit one. And this is no fucking, there's no GPS or anything. He's like, he, and he's working Danny Doring at the next show, which is in a fucking baseball field. So we're fucking driving down the turnpike and we're on E. There's no, no gas in the car. We're just driving and exit one. We get off. He's like, all right, make a left, make a right, make a left, use my wrestling intuition, make a right. And then we see this fucking baseball field with this big fence over it. And Danny Dory's in the ring working with somebody else. Or I was like, dude, how, how do I get in here? And we can't find the entrance. So both of us fucking scale the fucking fence. <laughs> and the people thought it was people thought it was part of the show. It's me and him both fucking hit the ring, shit canned whoever Danny Doring was working with. Him him and my brother had a match. And uh so that was that was the fucking the, the main event. So after the show we're drinking and telling everybody about our story, how we just got here, da 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 and we're the last people to leave. We get in the car, we turn it on, it starts fucking pouring rain. We start driving, my car dies of no gas in the middle of fucking nowhere. Oh fuck. And uh so we start pushing it. We're pushing my car and we're looking at each other like, how are we ever going to tell this fucking story? So we're pushing the car and we push it down a hill. And we end up at a naval base. And they're like, get the fuck out of here. This is a naval base. We're like, can you help us? They're like, no, fucking get out of here. We're like, fuck. So we push it back up a hill and down no, another hill. Up a hill. And up a hill, pushing the car in, the, in this fucking monsoon all of a sudden. And uh, he's only wearing, uh, he's got a towel on. And that's it. And uh, I have regular clothes on. And well, now they're wet clothes. And we find, like, a regular street. There's, like, no main streets. We find a regular street. And he's, like, out there trying to, like, f like look for cars. I'm like, dude, you're looking like a fucking serial killer. You have you just have a, you have a fucking towel on. I'm like, let, let, me, let me do this. So I'm out there, and I see lights going by. And I, like, jump in front of the car. And there was, like, a bunch of hot chicks in a fucking purple Geo Metro. I'm like, hey, listen, uh, you know, I fucking ran out of gas. Is there a gas station, like, anywhere that you can, like, take me to to buy a fucking gimmick of gasoline to come back to my car? So these chicks took us to the fucking turnpike gas station to buy a gas can full of gas to go back to my car. Nice. And fill my car up with enough gas to get to the gas. That, and then we came back with a fucking rad story. Nice. You know, we, we, we made it home at, like, sunrise. Like that. You know? Yeah. Came back with a oh, rad story, not a rat story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. Speaking about rat stories, remember <laughs> I was telling you about the fucking balls of New Jack beef? Right. And okay. and how, how that could only be in wrestling? Yeah. So I'm driving past Balls' house, and I see him outside. He's like, JC, JC, come here, come here, come here. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, dude, he's like, me and New Jack? He's like, one of us is going to fucking die. Well, he's, I'm, like, I'm like, what happened? He's like, all right. He's like, this chick Kate, she has a husband, and... He's in like a wheelchair bed, right? And he's like, so after the show, we go up to her hotel room, meet her and the husband, we smoke some pot, and she's giving me a massage. That's it, just a massage. And he goes, out of nowhere, the husband rolls over on his wheelchair bed, and he goes, that's enough, poof, and punches the chick in the face, right? So Balls goes, no. Balls is like, hey, hey, don't do that. Stop that. So he goes, the next night, uh, he goes, the next night, I'm up in the room with them again. She's giving me a massage. And the guy in the wheelchair comes over again and goes, that's enough. Somehow pulls out a bat and goes, that's enough. But Pink hits her in the head with a fucking baseball bat. Balls oh. goes, now me and her are friends. Fuck this. So he takes the guy in the wheelchair and he runs, he takes him out of the hotel room, dumps him out of the wheelchair, closes the door. Right? Where's the guy hiding the bat? He's in a wheelchair. Uh, what's that? I don't know. Where's the guy hiding the bat? 
Exactly. He somehow this is so this is balls inside of the story, right? Right. So, yeah, exactly. Guy pulls a bat, fucking put pink, hits the chick in the fucking head. Ball goes, no, now we're friends. No, I'm not letting him do that shit. So he throws the wheelchair guy out of the room, dumps him out of the wheelchair. The guy somehow has a line to New Jack, calls New Jack, and is like, Balls is in there fucking this chick, and she has hep C. Okay, so or, so now I'm talking to New Jack. I'm like, Jack, what the fuck happened with Balls and a guy in a wheelchair and a fucking baseball bat? What happened? He goes, he goes they was in that fucking room. They was cutting on each other, drinking each other blood, writing fucking devil shit in blood on the motherfucking wall. He's putting all the boys at risk. They're doing some weird fucking Satan shit, putting blood on the walls, spraying blood. And I'm like, dude, so like trying to find the middle ground of what the fuck actually right. happened, right? You know, and uh, so <laughs> the the, I, the, I, the finish of it. I think there was a big pull apart at like Extreme Reunion or one of those like one of those shows, <laughs> but you know, it was like only in wrestling <laughs> could fucking something only like that happen. Business. That's Rob, so. Cool. It seems like- <laughs> Seems like Heyman gets a free pass for all the people he screwed. Yeah, he does. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. He's he's made big money. Did Chris want to destroy Paul after? Yeah. How? What's it? What was Chris's thoughts after he lost his home because of him? Ah. Uh, uh, what he told my mom, he's like, "Yo, it's just stuff. I'll get it back. I could really give a fuck." Wow. Still, and he was young at the time. Peter, you know. He's like a <laughs> There's a there's a longer story to that, but you know I I don't know it because I never really, you know, when we're driving on the fucking road, I'm not gonna be like, what did you think about with fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like we would just yeah, talk about like regular shit. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, funny. Well, like, WCW time. I mean, he must have been kind of excited, I guess, initially, right? Like, how do you remember how that came about? Like that he got when he got to WCW. Like, remember how that came about? Because that was. I mean, I think WCW was picking, they were kind of, um, they were taking a lot of guys, weren't they? From Yeah, yeah. Their, Yo, uh, they, yeah, they, they snatched him up and they they fucking paid him a lot of money. And he's like, yeah, so, I just lost my fucking house so I could use the money. Right, and I think that would be a good time, like happy initially. Uh, yeah, initially it was, but again, that was when he, you know, uh, things were kind of the shits behind closed doors. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I mean, to be quite honest, around that time, oh one, oh two, I wasn't. When I was a kid, I thought it was cool to like go to all the wrestling shows. But now at this time, I'm in, like my late teens. I thought it was cooler to like go to parties and shit. So I really yeah. didn't fucking ask them. To be quite honest, like, yeah, you know. So I, I, I really don't know all of this, the whole thing. Ace, did you work Chris Candido in the nineties? You were around then. Lots of times. I told him, I was telling Johnny, I think I told you this too, Paul. You know, I did TV jobs all the time, so I was always wrestling as squash matches, you know, top guys. But Chris was the first WWF guy that I got a chance to actually work a match, like a 15-minute match. And it was the night before the Survivor Series when it was Chris's team versus, uh, I think it was Barry Horowitz's team, Rock yeah. Chris's team. It was the night before, and Chris is working out like a 15-minute like just nonstop bump taken, you know, the night before a big pay per view for him, and then the ring breaks halfway through the match. But yeah, but okay. since then I, I got to wrestle Chris plenty of times and always. Oh, oh so WWF was allowing him to work independence and stuff. At yeah. The time? Okay. Yeah. Okay. How yeah. badass was your mullet at the time? It was uh, <laughs> pretty long. It was awesome, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Come on. Guys, the mullet is making a comeback. Like all, I went to the beach today because I live on a beach too, Johnny. Like, nice. oh come on, it never left Canada. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a mullet. Yeah, let me you know. tell you something. All right. And the mustache too. The mustache is making a comeback. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Never, ne- never me. You're never the mustache real, for me. You're talking a real mullet, Renee. Right? Like you're talking like. The Kentucky waterfall looking deal, oh, like not like hipster mullet that's like shaved on the side. Business in the front, fucking party in the back. Yeah, like okay. that, like you're looking like Today a nice. We, one. we hit a record. Like, <laughs> nice one. My town was the hottest town in Canada. It was uh, 35 degrees Celsius, which I think is like 95 in Fahrenheit or some shit. And um, 
every young girl on the beach was wearing a thong. Like, this didn't happen. I haven't been on the beach in years because I'm usually away, right? This is like my first year that I'm home. And every girl wearing a thong, and this is new to me. And like, these are young girls. They should not be wearing thongs. They're too young to be wearing thongs. Right? Right? Yo. Yo. Did you go to the uh-huh. beach and tan? Did you go to the beach and tan three times today? Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. I need to go tan at the beach. <laughs> anyway, dude, when, when when you when you said the oh sorry, go ahead. Any stories of primetime Brian Lee? Did you have a thong, Renee? Oh, sorry, <laughs> I am wearing one right now. Same hair. Trying to get watch alongs. A W. He should. Yeah, everybody should, wears thongs. Should have seen him last yeah, night. Yeah, not cool unless you wear it. It was all, it was all yeah. hanging out last night, boys. We're actually going to call it the watch a thong now. <laughs> Dude, that's a great looking idea. good boys. Looking real good. <laughs> looking real good. So, any uh, prime time Brian Lee stories? Guys? Yeah, I mean, the first night I went to ECW was my brother's first night. I went there. He was he worked Tommy Dreamer. In the fucking scaffold match, yeah, yeah. that's the first time I ever saw like a table break, and it was like four of them. Like, holy shit, what the fuck? Right. And then, uh, and then he was the fake Undertaker for a while. Yeah. Um, again, personally, I was too young to like fucking shoot the shit with him and have a drink, you know. Right. right. So, I can't really like fabricate a fucking story, but <laughs> yeah, he was cool, yeah. <laughs> you know. Sure, he can. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Exactly. Right? I mean, I but, imagine no, I, at Smoky Mountain beforehand, maybe. Yeah, uh, does, I have more questions about Brian Lee myself. Has anybody seen him or heard of him? Him? He kind of just like, like disappeared, eh? Yeah. Hey, he's right. I don't. Yeah. Know I think he's like I think he's alive. I don't think he does conventions and stuff. You think like? The and he was he was a cool fellow. He was he was good, Brian Lee. Right. Wasn't he a part of the DOA too in WWF? The Disciples yeah, yeah. of Apocalypse? Yeah. And Skull and Skull, yeah. Skull. Skull. Who was his part? What was his partner's name? They were like twins almost. Skull and oh, Apocalypse. That was no. Jacob they and Eli Blue. They weren't almost twins. <laughs> They're twins. They were twins. Right, yeah, so you, always, really... uh, you always hear about Brian Lee. You don't hear about uh, the twins. Yeah, he has yeah. a twin too? The Harris twins. No, the Harris twins. Those were. Jacob and Eli That Blue. wasn't Brian Lee, was it really? No. no. Oh my God, no. The DOA. The DOA. Brian, the of Brian, Brian Lee. Oh, oh, oh. The fuck. The okay. I think you're saying Brian Lee had a fucking twin. No. And the two of them were fucking missing. But Crush right. was a part of that too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was Brian Lee, Brian Adams, and the Harris boys. Harris Not Kona Crush, Paul, because I know you like. I know you're a fan of Kona Crush. I like I purple and black. That was Crush. a great Kentucky waterfall. Like Demolition was my favorite fucking tag team. The yeah, Axis match. And then they yeah. brought the crush in. Yeah, it was awesome. I was watching dude I, crush in Portland wrestling not too long ago. I was like, I didn't know he went through Portland. But... I don't know yeah. why. Demolition was always like, when I was a kid, they were like, I thought they were the fucking best. I'll tell you why. Man. And that was one of the best toys too, because they had the hel- like the helmet masks on the toys as well that could come off. Yeah. Fucking awesome. I heard the fucking music. Here comes the axe. Here comes the smasher. Let's just be fans, okay? Jimmy Hart's best song. <laughs> I like the shaking camera effect. <laughs> there's actually some something Doesn't getting this like bring you back to when you were kids. Yeah, right. Like I'm 40 this year. Takes me back. Disasters. Kids. Yeah, that's Jimmy Hart made that song. Was it really? Did he really? Was it Rick Deringer? Yeah, this is like pre Jim Johnson. This it was Jimmy Hart, and there was another guy. I can't remember his Rick name. Rick Deringer. But... Deringer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah that was Jimmy Hart was writing all those songs. See, I don't remember when they had this. Yeah, I remember that shit. Early. Oh, wait. I don't know about the red paint there. Yeah, yeah red and black. What I'm talking about. I don't remember that paint. I Dude, fuck that. Been, Yo, I've Paul, instead of making a rap album, let's make songs for fucking wrestlers. I agree, That's man. That's the fucking action of the smasher right there. Yeah. 
I agree. Yeah, but, I mean, with that said, I can't, I can't, I mean, it's impossible for me to hear Back in Black without thinking of Grits, man. Like, it's like, Dude, you me know, too. like I, certain, I, songs, certain songs you can hear and, like, there's nothing you can do. Even if they're people that, like, you don't care for, but, like, you can't help it. Wrestling, like, will embed these songs into your head and then, like, you can't, you know, like, you can't possibly think of, like, Man, you know, I love Alice in Chains. Can't hear Man in a Box without thinking of Tommy Dreamer. You know, you're like, Enter Sandman, Sandman, obviously. But, like, back in black, I'm just like, man. That's, I'll, I'll be I honest know, it, with you, I don't think of Tommy Dreamer when I hear that song at all. Really? When you hear Man in a Box? I don't think of him, no. no it's it's like Sandman, I always think of Sandman, though. Right. Yeah. Back in black always comes on, like, when I need it to. Like, soon. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll like, walk into a gym. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, that's my brother telling me you need to get in the fucking gym. Like, yeah. like you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it'll come on at, like, uh, like crazy times. So, so Johnny, you know. have, do you still, like, work gigs here and there, or are you pretty much giving up? No, I, the, the last time I, uh, the, the last match I had was, I think, 2012 or 2013. I tagged with Tommy Dreamer at a Candido Memorial show. Okay. Um like after my brother died, my family they hated the business before, and then after that, they really fucking hated it, right? So, you know, at the same time, I was you know, I worked with Balls and Axel, and then Axel fucked up, and Balls was like, JC, me and you, me and you, we're gonna be a tag team, me and you. And then, you know, my family's like, we, we can't go through it again, and then I'd be here, and like at the same time, Sabu and Sandman, like those are my boys, and they'd call me up like, "Kid, where are you? You're supposed to be here right now. We're in New Jersey." I'm like, "All right," and I drive up there. So I had like one foot in, one foot out. Like I didn't know what the fuck to do. Right. You know. Till it's kind of sad when you think about, like you mentioned, like Balls, Axel, your brother, New Jack, Bam um, Bam, Bam Bam, John Thomas. Like how many of those? Hey, I know, dude. Yeah, public anime. Well, yeah. I, 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 you know what? I, I chalk it up to like, you know, like my, my brother's done a lot of like, like weird shit from beyond the grave. Like I, I you know, I'm not trying to sound like a weirdo, but no. like I, I remember telling him like, like certain things, right? Like, well, there's been times I've been driving back from indie shows, you know, like right after he passed away, and they said I was, you know, that's how that's how I was making a living, and when you on the indies, it's the shits. And they'd be like, oh, you know, the fucking house was short. And a fucking $100 bill would just fucking hit my windshield in the rain. And I would fucking grab it. And that's what? happened more than real? Yo, for real. And then uh, one time I was driving back in the summer. There was money blowing down the fucking street. I thought it was leaves. I'm like, wait, that's money. And I went and I fucking grabbed it all. There was a lot of ones and fives, but money nonetheless. <laughs> and, uh, like, just, dude, like, I, I don't know. So, well, what I told him was, so he's like, he was telling me something. I, I, he's like, yeah, the first time I wrestled for WWF, I, I did my first job there when I was like 20 or 21. He said so, like something like that. I'm like, all right, I'm not like psycho about it like you. So by the time I'm 24, I want to wrestle for WWF and I want to work the ECW arena too. And I got to do those things. Like he died and then I got to work for WWF or WWE and I got to work the ECW arena a couple of times. And then, uh, you know, and then I happened to fall into like a really fucking good career, and they were like, you know, my work and my family was like, what are you gonna do here? Like, so I had to get a fucking regular job. I would have been fucking dead to be honest, because after my brother died, I didn't give a fuck. I was just fucking, you know, right, taking every yeah. I was I was taking a ton of shit and fucking no good. I can imagine that being so, hard on you, right? Because you were only yeah, 23. I mean, 23 when yeah, you passed. And, yeah, 20, when, yeah, I was 23 when he passed. And, dude, the two of us were together every single fucking day. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's so crazy the way that, that he got clean was he had, like, an obsessive personality, but not, like, an addictive one. It was weird. Like, me and him, I'd pick him up every day. We'd go to the same place for fucking, for, like, breakfast slash lunch. Sea Breeze, this it's actually it's a different name now, but we go there. So one day he's fucking, we're sitting there shortly after he came back from Puerto Rico, and he's like, you know, he's like the fucking guys on the Indies now. He's like, you know, they're they're they got no bodies. Like 
when I was fucking 18, I was fucking jacked and I was making moves already. I was going here. I was going there. I'm like, yeah, dude, that's why you were a fucking standout. And I'm nuts. Like, that's why you fucking, you know? Yeah. And he's like, man, I really fucked everything up. And then <laughs> like that day he went to my mom's office. He's like, fuck this shit. He fucking with my mom's office. He got anti seizure pills, blood pressure pills and stopped taking somas like that day. And then, like, the next day, we're like, yo, let's get, let's, like, go get new. So we're like, yo, like, we just, we're like, let's, like, no more rolling up to buildings and, like, you know, just looking like shit. Like, let's roll up looking fucking fly, you know. And it was, like, literally overnight he was either going to go to to WWE or TNA. Like, the second he fucking, like, cleaned his act up. It was pretty crazy. Dude, um, I just did the laser. If you ever want to quit smoking cigarettes. It's like a laser treatment where they, dude, I'm on day six now, no cigarettes, no tobacco, and I have zero cravings. It's amazing. See, my thing is, it's like a, it's a habit, but it's a habit. Like this went out, but I like to like fucking, it's like a. Oh, I know, like I've been there, brother. Kind of gimmick, there. you know what I'm saying? Like I'm lighting this again. I wasn't even smoking it. I just have it in fucking hand. I actually want to go have one now. <laughs> if I could <laughs> fucking send you a Newport hundred through the internet, I would. <laughs> Renee, and, was, Renee what, and Johnny are stopping. You and me are starting, Paul. Yeah. What is, starting. Uh, <laughs> uh, what starting here. Starting. Yeah. What, where, what were your guys' thoughts on New Jack throwing Vic Grimes off the top of the scaffold in that match in 2000? Yeah, that was pretty fucking insane. Uh, but better, you know what? Better him Yo, than me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what. I, I took some fucking insane bumps. Like working with balls, I let him fucking duct tape me to a. We had a cage match. I let him duct tape me to a table, and <laughs> climb to the top of the cage and fucking drop a leg on. You know, fucking drop his. Yeah. I, 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 my thinking in that was, I was like, I'm gonna pretend I'm dead, because I'm. My thinking was, I, people who get in car crashes when they're drunk don't get hurt because they don't know what's coming. So right. I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna pretend like I'm dead and just lay here. And when he fucking came off the top of the cage. The fucking table exploded. It would, like hit all the sides of the cage, and the place was like fuck. His mom ran to the front and was fucking screaming at him. And I just saw. It, I didn't hurt at all. I saw it like I was fucking dead. Right. Um, <laughs> and uh, I let him take me out in a fucking stretcher and everything. Um, but I, I let balls throw me off fucking balconies, all kind of shit. I say that to say, if you say you're gonna fucking take a bump, you have to fucking do it. Because with the way Jack said, he said. Grimes is like, oh, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. Then what are you going to You got to go. I'm not saying you should fucking throw the guy to to his death, but. Wasn't he trying to kill him there? Or he was like. According to him, that's what he said. Yeah, he wanted to kill him. Yeah, don't kill the guy. But, you you know, if I'm like, Paul, you can throw me off my house. I'm going to fucking let you go. He tased him there, too. I'm gonna put yeah, a bunch of up. for you first, Johnny. I'm not gonna just toss you off. The <laughs> Thank mouth. you. Yeah, we're both going off together. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah, want to try, yeah. if you want to try and kill me by throwing me off a uh, scaffold on the 19 tables, that's all right. But when you tase me, that's where you, that's where you go over the line. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. Tase, come on, I ain't gonna do. I mean, if you tase your nuts. Them. Yeah. He, he tased them. If you, if you want to kill somebody, yeah. don't do it in a fucking wrestling ring. Fucking. Stab him in the fucking face when you're in the in the street. What the f- you know? Why would you do yeah. it in that venue? You hear well, that? Hold on. Keep the he chat room. Stab, he did stab a guy during a match in Florida once. Didn't he? On the I remember. Movie. I remember. Oh. I remember seeing that. Yeah. As soon as he stabbed the guy, fucking. Is that his name? Said, According to him, the story was that same guy was like, "If you train me, I won't press any charges." <laughs> wow. So he, he, here's here's a story I heard. So. I heard it like secondhand because somebody told my brother who was there. Uh, somebody who was there told my brother, and he told me. So, the uh, the guy was apparently like like green, and Jack was sitting in the bleachers. Again, this is third hand. This is what I heard. And the guy comes up to him, and there's like fans trickling in. The guy's like, "Hey, dude, uh, what do you want to do?" And Jack's like, "Yo, okay, Fabe," and he like walked away. And the guy fucking kept following him, and he's like, "But what do you want to do?" But the guy was like kind of like nervous. He's like, yo, gay fake motherfucker, there's fucking people in here. And then he finally went to the locker room and he's like, you know, what? What do you want to do? And the guy said a whole bunch of shit. Jack's like, come on, man. He's like, dude, I walk. He's like, I fucking hit you with stuff and I stab you in the head. He's like, I'm not doing any of this other shit. And then when they got in the ring, the guy 
punched Jack in the face and tried to fucking shit can him. And then Jack reached into his pocket and pulled out fucking the spike or whatever he had and stabbed the guy through the back. And then fucking stabbed him in the back. Yeah, it was fucking. The guy sold really good. <laughs> but yeah, we stabbed him in the back. Laid in his face, didn't he? Is that the one? No, that's, that, like, that, was, that, that, that was mass transit. This guy. Oh, second, right. That's what I was thinking was mass transit. Yeah, no, Joe? this guy was like a. This Remember guy was Gypsy a skinny looking fella. The oh, Gypsy, Gypsy Joe, Joe match? Oh. oh, Gypsy Joe, yeah. It's so hard to watch. Oh, yeah, Gypsy Joe, Jesus. But then when Jack talks about it, he's like, he's like, shit, man, I was high, and I beat the shit out of a 100-year-old man. Like, he like he knew he was fucked up for doing it, you know? <laughs> Gypsy Joe used to wrestle with my dad. That's how far back Gypsy Joe went. My dad wrestled in the fucking 50s and 60s. He's got to be... That's gone now, right? Or is he just Gypsy Magic? Yeah, Gypsy, yeah, Gypsy Joe, he passed away. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I, 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 again, I heard that Gypsy Joe's gimmick was he doesn't sell anything, and New Jack didn't know that. So he'd hit him, and the guy would just keep walking toward him. And Jack was like, what the fuck? He like, grabbed a chain, fucking smacked him in the head with it. The guy was still no selling it. I'm going to watch that match after this. That match is badass. It's so funny. Yeah. That old man just kept coming. He just kept going. Yeah, he's like Michael Myers, fucking... man. He just kept walking. Yeah, dude, for real. <laughs> <laughs> there were those chairs even... together. Jack was hitting him. The guy just kept walking toward him. <laughs> How long have you been smoking, Johnny? Pain. Do what? How, what age did you start smoking cigarettes? Uh, Like full time? Uh, I don't know. How the fuck? I don't know, like uh, 10 years maybe? I smoked here and there when I drank, but when I stopped wrestling, I kind of picked up the habit. Mm. And then I stopped, then I picked it up again. Yeah. I started, it's still good, obviously. I started at 22, but I was chewing tobacco when I was like 13, right? And then, 13? Uh, I did the chewing tobacco thing, too. Yeah. But here's yeah. the thing. It's like, okay, like once I left the United States... In Canada, it's like you know how much it is for a tin of tobacco, chewing tobacco now. No. How much? Thirty dollars. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, because you gotta really love healthcare. that shit to make thirty bucks. We have free health care, right? <laughs> and it's a cancer-causing product, so yeah, they jacked up the prices on it. And I was, as Paul, I was a three can a day fucking guy chewing tobacco. Do people? This could be a new business. Do people like fucking smuggle chewing tobacco in from the U.S. and sell it for like ten bucks? Um, you can get it off the reserves not, and stuff, right? Yeah, it's not a bad racket. He would they, go. To, he would well, that's to. that's how, that's what got Dino Bravo killed, right? Because he was chewing tobacco. No tobacco. Okay. He was smuggling <laughs> tobacco and money what was missing. Yeah. Nate Dupree, three cans a day and three tans a day. That's what I'm saying. It was a can for can. <laughs> he, was the, he was the he was the can and he was the can tan connection. <laughs> I know how oh, I'm not fucking like the hey. tan man connection, <laughs> dude. <laughs> oh man, my my brother used to get tan in a can. It was like a fucking a spray on tan. Right. So there was one even before that, and you had to take like literally take a paintbrush and paint oh. the tan. What, and he'd be like, dude? Can you paint me? Yeah, it was like a <laughs> not one with the bristles. It was it was the one with like the um. Like the foam, yeah, and you, foam you dumped too, it in the yeah. tan, oh. and I'd fucking, I'd tan his back with the fucking paint tan. Yeah, it was and then like you sweat, like, and it would just tan, right your come down like your face. Oh, it looks like you have jaundice, start turning <laughs> yellow. <laughs> his tan was always on point, though, man. Your brother always had the best tan, and like, yeah, I mean, even I probably. Remember. He probably thought he was in the worst shape of his life, which I can't think of when, but I'm sure there was a time when he probably thought he was in the worst shape of his life. He still looked better than most <laughs> everyone. He looked amazing. Like, I never, there was never a time when I started building, I thought, like, man, like, he's, he's let himself go, or like, he's, he, he must have be coming back from an injury or something because he just always looked fucking jacked and like legit, you know? Like, they were obviously, WCW, obviously he like, was fucking huge, man. Yeah, he was just so Dude. When you said when you just said that, me and my brother used to joke all the time. Fucking, so we walked into a locker room and Dusty Rose is there. He's like, "Candido, look at you, baby, looking very good, looking very tan." 
<laughs> we said tan. We fucking we never said tan the same way. Like look at you, baby, looking very tan. Damn, baby. It's it that like stuck with all my friends. It's like, oh, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna go lay on the beach, get a tan, just because Dusty, you know, Dusty Rhodes is fucking looking very good, looking very tan. Tan, looking to go through that pay window. <laughs> oh my god. And then yeah. Barry Windham, he, Barry Windham was in the locker room, and he was wearing jeans and cowboy boots and a shirt. He's like, "B.W. with your gear, baby. What are you working in?" He's like, "I'm just gonna wear this to the ring." Like, "B.W. that's terrible, baby." So he did the the tan, and that's terrible, baby. It's me and my brother you know, both took that. From, you know <laughs> what we're gonna have on in the, uh, in the very near future is uh, the Berserker John Nord, and um, oh fucking hus. Uh, yeah, yeah, but did you ever hear his muffler story, Dusty yeah. Rhodes' muffler story? <laughs> yes. No, I don't think so. Yeah, so I guess, like, back in the old days, like, a lot of the heavier set wrestlers had bad hygiene or bad... Anyway, so they'd roll up a piece of toilet paper and shove it up their ass. Yeah, uh, the old they would call it a muffler. <laughs> yeah, so I can't wait for John Nord to get on so he can go into detail about his Dusty Rhodes... Muffler. You gotta look up. You gotta look up the John Nord automotive commercial. Yeah, because he's oh yeah, it. right. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. This was like in Minnesota, like outside Minneapolis. Uh, yeah, he had like an auto dealership, and he had this commercial, and he's like destroying one of his cars, like body slamming his dude into it and shit. And, like it's oh, it's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, it's, it's like a cable access type commercial. <laughs> No, no Yo. credit, no problem. But when you miss a payment, they slam. Yeah, 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 yeah. No credit, no problem. Yeah. If you miss a payment, Yo. we're gonna kick your ass. Yeah. I, I, I got, I got a challenge for you guys. Since you've been around the business for a while, there's a, there's a new Jack shoot interview trailer, and he's like, he's like, I was, he's like, he's like, I was dating this chick. She was in the eating ass, but I was on Ally. Oh yeah, Ally. Did we lose you? Uh, he froze. Oh, man. That's yeah, part of the swing. I think the ass eating girl he was talking. Are you there? Oh. oh, fuck. So, no, anyway, New Jack's like, he's like, I was taking this stuff called Ella. And right. Ella, I make, I make oil run out your ass. <laughs> so, for my entire, I didn't know, I still to this day don't know what Ella is. Is it, does it, does it stand for something? Is it L I? Is there something called Ella? If it was a narcotic or an anabolic, I'd know what the fuck it was. But I'm dying to know what Ella is. Um, it's on a shoe trailer. He he, he says yeah, it. He's yeah, like, yeah. Well, he, he's talking. I never heard me. of it. I, I don't know what he's saying. It's, it sounds like Ella. Uh, <laughs> I'll say the video. But I, I don't know why I remember that, but yeah, it's like, I was like talk, he was talking. This is when him and uh, Terry Reynolds broke up, and he just went off. Oh, you saw that? You saw what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, I see that. Ella, what the Ella. fuck is Ella? Is it mean like yeah, lidocaine, Ella. like L I? Like what the fuck? I don't know. Basically, it's like it has oil running down his ass, and then <laughs> he was eating Stop his it. ass, and then she had all this black shit, I guess, all over her face. Like you eat a fucking pudding pop, but I <laughs> 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 me and my friends I'm watched that because we were just like, that with you boys, we're just like, dude. <laughs> We're like, why? Why do we not know what this is? Because it was like, if a performance-enhancing drug or a narcotic, we would know. Right. Like, what, what's, what's he trying to say? It's probably like a stool softener. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you should, oh, yeah, opinions maybe, on the mass yeah. transit incident. Yeah. What are you, what's your opinions on that, guys? That's the guy that he carved up like a pumpkin, right? Mass yes. Yeah. 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 Thanksgiving Day turkey. Yeah. Yep. And so I, I I know this because I, I after my brother's dark side of the ring, New Jacks was on, and I remember the story. So there was a fella who was a big chunky fella, and he said he was twenty one. He said he was trained, and uh, so he was going to work with Jack. Basically, he just you know get fucking stabbed by Jack, and you know that's it. Yeah, and uh, so. He doesn't fucking know the business or anything. And he goes up to New Jack. He's like, hey, I want to do X, Y, and Z. I want to put you through a table because my family's here. And I have my friends who are fucking midgets. And they're going to come in the ring, too. And da da da, da. And Zach's like, what the fuck? And uh, the guy's like, um, 
he's like, yeah, I want to get color, but I've never done it before. Can you get it for me? Oh. And Jack's like, yeah, all right. And oh. he, he kept the fucking scalpel blade and uh, he fucking zipped the guy's head wow. like wide the fuck open. And Devon just fucking powdered and fucking Jack just went to work on this dude. So, and it turned out the guy like falsified his papers and he was really 17 when he said he was 21. He said he was trained when he wasn't. Yeah. And so oh, I, that, 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 that's all I got for that. That, that last transit kid, in uh, ended up like killing himself or whatever, right? That's I thought he wild. died because... Was it he killed himself? He, got, or like like a, he died young, I know that. Well, yeah, I it, mean, because he was it said, morbidly obese. Under, but. Paul, it said, he died of, it said he died of a tummy uh, fucking gastric bypass gimmick on the yeah. dark side of the oh, face. Really? Oh, really? Okay. Oh, I thought he choked on an apple. <laughs> I don't so, know. Some kind of weird so way. The, I thought he OD'd on a salad. Mm, I don't think that dude's... Yeah. Paul, you're a prof- Paul. You're a professional, Renee. You're a professional. How many guys did you wedge in with a with a razor blade? None. That's I that's. Think. I, I think yeah. I think it's all. I think that sums it up right there. You know, yeah. uh, not very professional. I remember the no. last time we did the gathering of the jugglers is like maybe ten years ago, <laughs> and we're out in like some hillbilly field, in like Indiana somewhere, and they had this big old like. Uh, hardcore battle royal, and I wanted to go get like fucked up in the on the grounds somewhere. And so there was this young kid, and he was like, "Hey, uh, you have any advice for fucking like getting color?" <laughs> all the, like all these other dudes are here. Like you're asking me, like, "Yeah, okay." I was like, "Listen, man, like if you've never colored before, just get like the prick of the razor, you know, like the little tip of the razor." And what I was, what I always learned and was taught was like poke, like don't drag, right? Poke, poke. because it'll leave less of a, of a scar, yeah. and you'll still get the the puncture effect. But you're gonna have to poke a few times, so it'll look like you know, like if anything, it's yeah. like the top of like a salt shaker, right? Um, and he was like, okay, yeah, that's good, that's good. And uh, he goes, cool, thanks. I was like, yeah, you don't want like that fucking hamburger meat shit, like. Develop on your yeah, you want to look at Duel the Butcher. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, uh, I, you know, and so I went and got like fucked up. I think it was like Necro Butcher or something somewhere. He had like <laughs> forty fucking nitrous balloons around his neck, and um, <laughs> and then like I didn't watch the match, and I came back, and uh, he was just like totally crimson. He had like the biggest like frown on his forehead, like the like it, it was like. It was like, yeah, it looked like a frown. Okay, like, I, I thought he like tried to like. It was like as if he scalped himself. I was like, what he happened? Wasn't yeah. I was like, what happened? I thought I thought it said like poke. And he goes, I, I know, I I got so scared. I just I had somebody else do it for me oh. during the match. And I was like, that's, that's the a one. terrible idea. Dude, it's like have <laughs> someone else fucking gig you. Like no, uh. but you yeah. You ever see that big fucking scar on Carlito's head? Yeah, but he's Puerto Rican. They're born with that. No, no, it was Sabu. <laughs> Sabu had uh, sliced him open. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Like, don't yeah. have someone else gig you, man. It's not going to be pretty. You know? I was going to say, the, 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 the few times I did it, you know, it w- was in, like, uh, cage matches or something like that, and yeah. I never – and I, I – I, the times – I never worked with my brother. No, I did work with my brother in a cage match. Um. I'm, what I'm saying is, I only did it myself. I never let anybody fucking do it for me. I fucking kept the blade in my in my elbow pad, so I knew where it was, and then fucking. But I only did it like four or five times. That's it. But even you know? if you were gonna let someone else do it, maybe like yeah, maybe your brother, like you could trust him. Yeah, yeah, somebody you could trust. Right. Yeah, like, like get me in a headlock and fucking. Yeah. Oh, you do it. All right. <laughs> yeah, zip your head the fuck open. Yeah, right. Was, right? A, guy, a guy you first meet, you're just gonna tell him to just oh, cut your yeah. during the you know? <laughs> and he's using his own implement to do it to you too. You don't, you know? Yeah, dude. I don't know. The guy's gonna be mixing up in there, blood and shit. Fuck that. Now, get a rusty razor. Make sure it's extra rusty. Yeah, dude. I I, I wash my hands after I touch a doorknob. Like, imagine somebody else's razor. Fuck that, oh, dude. Yeah. All right. Well, if there's any last questions for our guest, um, 
Johnny, is there anything you want to promote? Like any um, businesses oh. or social media or anything? Yeah, if you want to get my brother's book, Chris Candido, No Good Mix Needed, um, you can get it at eatsleepwrestle.com. And there's Chris Candido shirts at prowrestlingtees.com. And the Chris Candido books on Amazon, too. Paul London, how is it? It's good. I love it. I love it. It's definitely one you can just keep rereading. Um, hey, Johnny, do you still watch wrestling at all? No. I, if if I turn it on and I see somebody I know, I'll watch yeah. it. But yeah, I don't keep we up do with a, it. Really. We do watch-alongs yeah. if you're ever bored. And it's all that I'm I mean, I'll, I'll, do it, I'll, <laughs> I'll do it like this and fuck around and tell jokes and drink. Yeah. The, don't, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Renee are very serious about our watch-alongs. They love to watch. Very serious. I can't watch this shit, Johnny. I'm telling you, don't let them fucking trick you. <laughs> Talk you into watching well, you modern day. Me and you will be like the comedic relief, and we'll let them too. Yeah, I'm down for Analyze. that. Yeah. yeah. This will be the smoking section over right? here. Yeah, fucking. And then the you only, I'll, guy, I'll be the honest, watching you, section. The only thing that sucks about the watch-alongs is watching along. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I, I just tune in to chat with the with the with the group and uh, chat with Renee and. Uh, say, he's, gotta, he's gotta be kind of quiet, right? Like, yeah, yeah. The comments me, are. Me and Renee have fun though. Last night what was uh, a. Is no one is no one doing a like an annual memorial? Like I don't understand why these memorial shows happen and then they just kind of disappear. I don't know why that happens. You know what I mean? Like. I think because like like different promoters fucking retire and then or whatever they do go where promoters go and then other ones take over and sure that makes so, sense. So you know, like I think the guys that had like personal relationships with my brother, like like that knew who he was, would have like memorial shows. But like after like ten years, like you know, oh, like they how many people die in wrestling a year? You know. <laughs> It's yeah, I think like the average only... fucking age of a wrestler dying is like fucking fifty or some shit. Mm. I'm just gotten better. I'm kind of exaggerating. How many but... people are passing away? So it's like, yeah. Well, I mean, superstar Billy Graham made it to eighty. So, you know. well, I'm surprised the Wednesday night, uh, the Wednesday night group isn't, you know, now making a, uh, a like a. A memorial after every guy that passes away, you know, they have the fucking. I still don't understand. I still can't wrap my head around them associating with Owen Hart when he had like zero to do with that company. Um, well, if they well, do cover it, Renee and I will be there to watch it, right, Renee? <laughs> Goddamn right, we will. No, no, I think, I think Martha, with good reason, hates the WWF with a passion, of course, but she wants to keep her husband's memory alive i mean because i mean he dedicated his life to it right he right. gave his life to it so and that one heart foundation is an amazing thing i mean it's it's really it's you know if you if you ever check them out it's really a great thing um mm. i just feel that whether there are personal ties or not all these heroes of ours you know who have passed on should you know, we we collectively should be doing all that we can to to make sure that you know they're never forgotten. They're certainly never forgotten for us. But in terms of just, you know, and that's one thing. Say what you will about Dark Side of the Ring. You know, some of their episodes might be questionable. You have to keep in mind it's tough to tell a story in forty five minutes. Some stuff is going to get glossed over. Some stuff is going to get, you know, completely not even mentioned. Right. So that's tough. And. And also to 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 have their back too is they interview everyone for a very long time, so right. they have like a lot of stuff to like sift through to pick out the best parts, right? You know? Right. So that's like so they, they, they that into forty five minutes, right? Because you think yeah. how commercials like you really only have about forty five minutes until the story. That's tough, man. You have a fucking a tough job. Oh, dude, I, I'm I'm with you on all the memorial shows because dude, everybody who does this wants to be remembered, you know. Right, and, right. Like that's that's all their ultimate goal is that you know they want to leave you know their imprint on the business. I know my, I know my brother did. That that was you know what, what he really cared about. Like like in, in his book, I remember in like '03, he put a fucking 
I think it was like a Von Erich's book on my parents' coffee table, and he was like thumbing through it at Christmas or something. And I was like, Christopher, like, this is what's going to happen. You're going to end up in a coffee table book. He's like, Ma, if people still remember me 15 years from now, I'd be overjoyed to be in a coffee table book. Like, people do this because, you know, they want to leave their, their stamp on it. So, yeah, right. whatever I could get behind, the f whatever, I'm down, you know. Yeah, as long as it's obviously with the right intent, not anything exploitive. Um, because there's a lot of fucking shitbirds in wrestling still, oh. you know. It's the way the business is, I guess, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I, I remember just another, like, Tammy, at one of Chris's shows, was going around going, we need money for Chris's family. Yo, like, what, you, we don't need money. We're good. Like, you know. Right. If, if, if she needs money, tell them that. Don't fucking lie and say we need money. Right. So what, uh, she was going around the locker room or just around the family? No, like uh, like the promoters. I mean, like, well, it's for the family. It's like, you know. Uh, my, my family's very comfortable. You don't believe what the fuck she says. Whatever money she's getting, she's just putting in her pocket, you know. Yeah. She would just say, I need the money. That's another thing. But don't try to fucking, you know. I was just around her one time. We toured France. She was on a French tour. I think we, I was around her for like three weeks. And I yeah. couldn't understand why the promoter booked her. Because, like, what does she do? She doesn't wrestle. She just comes out there. It's annoying to everyone. And everybody fucking hates her. And she wasn't, like, attractive at this point in time. She was, like, quite overweight. And, you know and what the, I mean? The, the part about that, when she was quite overweight, she thought she was still fucking super attractive oh yeah. Which, yeah i think yeah. that's a, yeah it's well must be kind of like the reverse of <laughs> you know someone who's like anorexic i guess and like she has like the opposite op she has like the opposite of body dysmorphia she thinks she's yeah, always yeah. like yeah, fucking I, chris candido ecw fucking right. side yeah, chest. hey johnny did you ever did you ever catch her porn that she made dude fuck no are you kidding me <laughs> I just saw the like, clip and she's like wearing her WWE Hall of Fame ring. Dude, it was so yo, so this is fucking so after my brother's funeral is like there's a repast, right? I mean, where like everybody chills and like eats and shit. Right. And so I'm sitting there with all my buddies and um I like I remember my friends are with me, uh Jay Lethal and Arcadia are behind me, whatever. She's doing whatever. But Billy Gunn walks up to me, he's like He's like, hey, dude, uh, are you fucking Tammy? I said, fucking Tammy, are you out of your fucking mind? I'm like, no, she's fucking disgusting. He's like, well, it, it kind of looks like she's kind of like leaning on you. I'm like, no, fuck out of here. So I have another drink. Raven comes walking over. He's like, dude, you're not fucking Tammy, are you? I'm like, fucking Tammy, where are you getting this from? And so then independent of them, my Uncle Vinny walks over. And he's like, dude, are you fucking Tammy? I'm like, are you guys all sick in the fucking head? I'm like, so I... I guess what was happening is I was sitting there just having a drink and she would like come over and like put her arm on me or some shit. And everybody like took it as like, so I said that to say, no, she's fucking disgusting. I would never look at anything that she fucking made. Ugh. Well, what, what, when did, did she, what she did? A, I mean, I'm kind of out of the loop. I didn't realize she did a porn. Yeah. She did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was like years did. ago, though. No, did, did did she end up farting in the? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Out of here, dude. Yes, she, no. yeah, she did. Yes, yeah. she did. She sure yeah. did. Was it, it wasn't with another worker, was it? No. Oh, it was a worker, but not a wrestler. <laughs> they're, they're workers. <laughs> they're workers yeah. too, man. Get out of here. Okay. Well, um, I. I want to thank our guest Johnny for uh, for coming on and, uh, and and discussing the. Uh, if you have not yet watched the guys, Dark Side of the Ring, Chris and Tammy, very very well done. Came across very well. Yeah, um, for sure. I'm super stoked with it. Yeah, John. Anytime you want to come on again, man. If you want to, you know, vent your frustrations or talk about <laughs> anything, you ever want to watch wrestling with us? Yeah, dude. Let um, me know. I have tons of funny yeah. stories and shit. Yeah, yeah we'll funny stories. That's it. That's right. Don't don't watch it. Just we'll hang out. So. For the most part, we right, just yeah. talk to each other while it's on, and the fans love it. So yeah, um, there you go. All right, yeah, so hit me. Do you know where to find me? 
tomorrow tomorrow night we're right, doing fellas. crackdown. So if you if you got nothing to do on a Friday night, you probably you probably actually have a life, unlike myself. Uh, and I sit and watch wrestling. Um, <laughs> Ace, you got no life, right? You're gonna watch wrestling with me tomorrow, right? I got my wife's grandmother's funeral oh, day tomorrow. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm but sorry, uh, no, it's all good. No, that's good. She lived to be a hundred. Okay. Wish we all can. So no, I'm Paul. so good yet. Paul, Monday, you I'll be there. Uh, I'll find a life. Oh, so I don't know if uh, I'm gonna go tan. I'm gonna go tan again tomorrow. I think I just decided. Okay. Well, I'm I'll the palest the... one here, next to Mike. Okay. All right, guys. I want to thank you all. Hi, right, fellas. Thank you again, Johnny and uh, yeah. Ace, Renee, Paul. Nice, fuck yeah, dude. All right, guys. Yes. Dude, yeah. Anytime, right. hit me up. I'll come on, tell funny stories and shit. All right. Okay, dude. I'll send you a link tomorrow. Okay, guys. Good. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Later, fellas. Bye. Bye.